Mike. Thank you. Uh, this is a continuation of the Board of Selectmen meeting for Tuesday, August 9th, 2016. We begin the executive session. And now we'll continue with the Pledge of Allegiance at first. I pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to address the board to share their ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding their town government? Speak now or for at least two weeks, hold your peace. Okay, seeing none, thank you. Chief Slammon, please join us at the podium. Where did you go? Once again, we're going to start off our meeting on a very high note. Chief Slam, please. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, it's an honor to uh, introduce three new hires to our department. I'd like to just open up and uh, truly thank the board, the community town meeting, for uh, supporting the organization in this process this year. We have some uh, new equipment, and uh, along with that equipment, to have some new hires has been outstanding. And I'm, I'm just... Uh, Really excited for the progress we've made this year. So just to give you a kind of a brief summary of what we've gone through in the last few months, um, this all started with um, a video project. Um, a few of you might have uh, got it earlier when I was in my internship that uh, we had, uh, do you have what it takes? This group uh, of the duty crew worked with us to uh, produce it. We had Mike Tarosian come in and um, uh, shoot a video with the help of HCAM. We uh, sent it out and advertised for personnel um, using uh, social media, the internet, and uh, we didn't do anything through, um, you know, paying for advertising. And we had a great return. We probably brought in over 30 candidates. Um, in our interview process, we found that they were motivated. They had most of them, I'd say, had seen the video, Maria, and um, it was just uh, kind of a success story for our first adventure. So. Uh, after the video, I did a, quite a bit of work with um, Maria and her HR team. I had uh, Jessica and uh, Anne Marie really help me through a process that I didn't realize how deep it was to uh, interview and do the details of that that work. So thank you very much. Um, and just along that line, the final thanks would go to I had all my uh, shift lieutenants involved in the interview process. For many of them, it was the first time they got to uh, get a feel for the candidates before they came in. And just in the three or four weeks now that we've been working with them, I feel like it was a real connection and helped us get off the ground uh, quicker. And then finally, the uh, police department gave us some assistance in the background with um, some background work, and that was a, a real asset for our uh, end product. So thanks for everybody. So kind of just to get into the uh, orientation of the candidates, they've spent... Uh, two to four weeks now, depending on their start dates, with just learning the fire department. And um, I'm going to introduce to you the uh, three selections. So one of them is a, a replacement for a retiree, and the other two are new day positions uh, working for us during our higher call volume. Any questions? Doing good? So far, so good. Okay. So first off, I'm going to introduce uh, Zach Ingraham. If I can have him uh, just come over to this area. So Zach is a uh, graduate of Danvers High School. He uh, worked as a uh, call firefighter for the Hamilton Fire Department. Um, he had a lot of great fire background that we found in his interview. He had some real depth and knowledge for what I consider to be a real youngster. Um, but age has nothing to do with employment at Hopkinton <laughs> Inc., right? Uh, no, I was just really <laughs> impressed with the, uh, his, his, his depth, depth was amazing. I'm just messing with you. So uh, Zach is a uh, graduate of a call volunteer recruit training program. It's a 320-hour program that um, literally there are volunteers that go during nights and weekends and get trained to the level of what we send out as a uh, career firefighter trainer. So he did that on his uh, own. He is board certified in 2013 as a, at the Firefighter 1-2 level, which is the starting level for a career firefighter. He is a certified hazmat 
operation level technician at, uh, in 2014. He went and put himself into paramedic school with uh, Pro EMS out of Cambridge, which is a high level. We get some side training from them. They're a pretty advanced program. And uh, he's nationally certified as a paramedic. Would you like me to bring all the candidates up before we do some questions? Please. Sure. Okay. So my uh, second candidate is Ariel Van Den. And uh, Ariel is a graduate of Mass Connemet Regional High School. And she's also was a, in a uh, Topsfield Fire Explorer program. Um, she's worked as a call firefighter and is currently doing some shifts for Boxford and um, she was a member of the Acton Fire Department. She has training 2015 of a uh, career fire recruit program. She is Pro Board Certified Firefighter 1 2. She is Certified Operational Level Hazmat. She is a graduate of the Cambridge Pro EMS program, uh, paramedic. She has, uh, in 2015, taken training in firefighter survival skills, trench rescue technician level, confined space technician level, which is the highest level you can do, and um, operational uh, advanced emergency vehicle operations. And uh, our final candidate is Paul Finnering. So Paul is from uh, a graduate of Norwood High School. Paul has uh, got experience on the uh, medical side with uh, Lions Ambulance Service. He's attended uh, Salem State University. He has graduated the Educational Resource Group Paramedic Program. He attended classes recently for North Shore Community College and Mass Asoya Community College. And he had a deep uh, background with volunteerism in his community where he did uh, coaching for Little League Pop Warner football, JV baseball, for uh, Sharon and Norwood both. Um, I think the proudest thing I can say about all three candidates was for um, new firefighters, the depth and experience that they brought. Um, we have Zach and uh, Ariel, both are ready to go out on a truck, firefighters coming in the door, and Paul has some deep medical skills. So between all three of them, as new hires, they've been working as a team. They help each other uh, with strengths and weaknesses to uh, to work together, and um, the last three weeks at our organization has been a blast. Um, the crews have kind of enjoyed working with them, and uh, I'm excited to present them to you as our three new candidates. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Chief. So, uh, how many um, how many candidates do we have again? We started with how many? We had a, a little over 30 in the pool. We broke them into three groups. We've gone through two groups. We had quite a few applications that weren't quite to the criteria level that we had advertised, which was high, but there was some real strong interest, and that third group we're about to look at, and many of them have all the credentials at the top level now, so uh, pretty excited about that. So we started with 30, and we have three, so congratulations to all three of you for making it through the process. Uh, we're excited to have you on the team. It's good to have some new energy in the department, and uh, you're going to have great careers here in Hopkinton, and we're lucky to have you. Mr. Tedstone. I don't have a whole lot to say. Uh, welcome aboard. I know that the, the uh, process that you've gone through, knowing the chief for a long time, could not have been easy. And uh, I'm glad you made it through. He holds you to pretty high standards, and uh, I know all the guys in the fire department have known him for a long time, and, and uh, you're entering one of the if not the best fire department around and uh, we're lucky to have you and you're uh, you're lucky to be here so welcome aboard I was actually lucky enough to already see them in action on the uh, on the new ladder truck at uh, <laughs> the center school Is golden a pond took there? at uh, no that's no, on selfies <laughs> and um, yeah it, and you know just the, the professionalism that they that they exhibited working on the uh, new ladder truck was great and then also coming in to help out residents at uh, Golden Pond already so thank you very much uh, great job great Mrs. Wright well welcome and congratulations and uh, a few nights back when we were welcoming some fire personnel I remarked I hope you never come to my house I will say that again but I will say if you do uh, I'm very confident with who's going to be 
coming to my house. So um, welcome. And I hope you'll enjoy Hopkinton. Uh, it's a great community, and we very much appreciate and support our um, emergency personnel. Um, just jumping a bit, a, a little bit um, later in our agenda, we have an acceptance of some gifts to the Fire and Ambulance Fund. And one woman wrote a note to us about the fire and ambulance. And, and this is what she said about the department you're joining. It is so comforting and reassuring to know that we have such a good group of people ready and willing to come to our rescue in moments of crisis and despair. Besides being so professional, you are a very humane and caring group of individuals. And for that, I will always be grateful. And um, this is how our citizens feel about our, our fire and rescue. And um, we welcome you and know you'll be a wonderful contribution. Mr. Sestari. Yeah, welcome aboard. Uh, we're happy to have you. Congratulations. Um, you know, I think that a lot of great things have been said. And uh, uh, Ms. Wright uh, already took my line about, I hope I never see you in action unless I happen to be driving by some other part of town. Um, but uh, we're, we're happy to have you on board. I have a question for the chief. Um, now, with these uh, three hires, what are, what's our staffing at uh, for the various shifts? Are we are we full up, or how do we look? So I have uh, one group that's down one from a retiree, mm -hmm. and then I have one that uh, an injury that's been going on that's down. So two of these candidates will be going off to the fire academy. Zach starts next week for ten weeks, and Paul goes September thirtieth for 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, I will probably shift uh, one of the candidates. Ariel will make it onto a group just to balance the group strength. And then when everybody comes back around Christmas time, we'll have uh, four groups of five with two working during the day, which is our peak volume. Great. All right. Well, congratulations again. Welcome. How are we doing with the ladder truck? I have them talk. Chief, how are we doing with the ladder truck? Uh, fantastic. The ladder truck was the big project today. So these three plus the duty group uh, spent probably two thirds of today um, <laughs> setting up and organizing equipment. Um, it does next week. It goes down to Bulldog to get a last full go through. I will probably be running it um, as a uh, soft start during the days, but starting this week. Uh, just to, making sure we have the right equipment on it. Everybody's up to snuff. I suspect by September 1st, it'll be like servicing our community and available for everybody else, kind of officially online where everything's done. So, Do we have the decals and everything on it? We do. We did our first pass on decals, um, and there's actually a couple pieces. We've been trying to be, um, what should I say, uh, conservative with our spirit. We, we're, we're actually going to add a couple more decals on just to spruce it up. It really is going nice. No surprises. You don't have any major costs. So um, it, it has some decals on it right now. It's actually getting a little more Thursday, I believe. Okay, great. Welcome, all three of you. Congratulations on your new appointments, and we look forward to seeing you around town. They have a bunch of family members here, and I don't know if we want to snap a quick picture or something okay, like absolutely. that. It's kind of Come nice uh, you just to do a, a little something if you can. Family members? Chief, right here. Chief, would they like to say anything? Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should. Uh, All right, sir. Uh, so thank you guys very much. Uh, this fire department is great. Uh, the one I previously worked for, you know, the equipment was nothing like this. It was very hard pressed to get things. Uh, this place is awesome. You guys really give us everything and more. Uh, the chief's great. All the lieutenants are great. I'm very excited to be a part of this community, and I thank all, every single one of you. Excellent. Thank you. Ariel. Hello. I just want to say thank you. This is such a great community since day one, walking in the door. Everyone has been so helpful to me, and just it's so great to be part of this organization. The fire department has been great, and everyone else is just, you can tell that everybody loves their job when they come to work every day, whether it be such as yourselves, police, fire, anywhere. They're just great. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Hello. Uh, if I can sound like a broken record, but I want to say thank you to all you guys uh, for the opportunity to work here. Uh, it's all new to me. Everyone's been great to me. And 
Uh, happy to serve the town of Hopkinton. Thank you. Lucky to have you. Thank you all very much. Do you guys want to do a picture real quick, Chief? Or do you want to do that? All right. Bob, you're going to help us? Uh, oh, a little picture or something? Who's in it? Would they please stand? Whoever's in it? Yeah, if you want to jump in the picture, come on up. All right. <laughs> you want to Why don't we all stand in the background? Uh, we'll stand back here and you got yeah. photos there. Chin or God. Someone hiding in the back, man. No, no, man. Uh, yes, <laughs> come a little closer. All right, that's very, very nice. Um, who can hold this for me? All right. I weigh the same whether I'm standing or sitting, right? Fire department said, No, don't scare me. All right. Oh, my goodness, what beautiful smile. You've got a lot of EMTs here. Uh, She's a the turn camera on. <laughs> All right, come on, everybody. Uh, let me do my photography. Oh. <laughs> All right, very good. Excellent motion. Uh, Y'all look so great. Where's the big smiles, though? They're there somewhere. The select them, rather. Uh, rather, really professional. Right? Thank you. Steve, you take that. You take that. Congratulations. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, everybody. Oh, thank you. Okay, next up, we have the consent agenda. Um, first and foremost, on the consent agenda, we've got the state primary warrant. I saw our town clerk here this evening um, earlier, so we'll be voting to approve that state primary warrant. Uh, second, we've got some gifts of $50 from Angela Velasquez uh, from Hopkinton and $500 from the, from the estate of Flora Bosconi uh, to the fire. Those two gifts are for the fire ambulance fund. We have minutes of 5253, 531, 621, and 712. We have a parade permit uh, from Stephen Hartman of Commander Soft Pants, Inc., for the closure of a portion Fruit Street near the Fruit Street Well Building uh, for September 7th between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. And looks like uh, number five, a storage of flammable liquids license. The uh, Board of Selectmen will consider re-signing six storage flammable liquid licenses from EMC for 80 South Street, 117 South, 171 South, 176 South, and 228 South. Chief Slam is still here if somebody wants to talk about that. And uh, item number six, the appointment of election workers. The Board of Selectmen will affirm the election workers' appointments uh, as presented by the town clerk. Mr. Kamalo. Please. Uh, please. Okay, we will scratch item five from the consent agenda. Any other comments, Mr. Kamalo? Does anybody have an issue scratching number five from the consent agenda? Okay, seeing none. Does anybody have anything they want to break out of the consent agenda? The only thing I saw was on the uh, appointment of election workers. There's someone in there that's uh, sold their house and moving to the Cape. So Lenny Holden no longer going to be living in town. He's moving the, to the Cape. Okay, so let's break that item out. Uh, any others want to be broken out? Everybody okay? I'd like to break out the parade permit for Fruit Street. Okay. Um, so the board, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to approve items one, two, and three of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So mm -hmm. items one, two, and three pass. Please uh, let's be sure we get letters out to our uh, very generous contributors to the ambulance fund uh, and thank them. Uh, item number four, I asked to break out. That is the braid permit for the um, closure of Fruit Street on September 7th from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. And we're going to be redirecting traffic during that, during that time period, at least for a four or five hour period uh, during then. I'm trying to understand what the, um, uh, not to sound like a curmudgeon, but I'm not sure what the gain is for the town of Hopkinton to close one of our major thoroughfares on a school day. And we've got buses moving back and forth and we've got parents moving back and forth and we've got the fruit street fields and blah 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 uh and it's to access a, a, with all due respect to the water pump building there i mean it, it, it what's in it what's in it for the community to other than to close our road for a day so i'm struggling with that one frankly but if the board wants to approve it you know, that's fine too anybody have any thoughts on this parade permit well um mr chairman i, I did read the details and it appears that the road will be accessible for local traffic. It's not completely closed. Residents will be able to get by. I noticed that the police did not have objections other than that they meet with them ahead of time to make arrangements. Um, and I would want the residents to be notified of exactly the hours when it would be limited access. But when I read the application, it I thought it indicated that local traffic could still get through. Actually, the description I'm reading is, it sounds like the description of a scene that they want to film. It says, vehicle arrives at a checkpoint. Actors have a conversation uh, between the motorist and the checkpoint officer. Paperwork is approved and the vehicle drives on. A booth will be placed just off of Fruit Street on a well building property. During filming, a pole gate will be used at the border crossing on Fruit Street. Uh, for non-local traffic, uh, or non-local traffic, and will need uh, will need to be diverted. So that to me sounds like, unless you live on that street, you know you can't get down there. Right. But it said non-local, so that sounds to me like if you're trying to get to your house, they will let you through. If you, you want to get through. to your house, they'll let you through. But everybody but else who wants to go down schools, uh, Fruit Street, has to. School buses, soccer moms, soccer dads, whomever. Football moms and dads. I mean, there's a lot going on at yeah. Street. We, the scene sounds very benign and very short and very quick, but they can take six hours to shoot mm. one guy saying hello. I mean, I just think that we're opening up a can of worms here. I don't see what the gain is for the town. And who's paying for all the details and things like that? That would be the. That would absolutely be the applicant. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Kamal, do you have any thoughts on this? Through the chair, I think based on the question that the chair has asked, I would defer to the police chief in terms of the traffic arrangements. And also want to point out to the board that, in fact, the applicant is here and can answer any other questions that the board may have. Okay, great. Thanks. Chief, do you have any thoughts on the application and the traffic flow? Mr. Chair, uh, a member of the uh, movie production team has already been in contact. That was our big uh, request was to make sure that someone, if this was allowed, that uh, they would meet with us and start the planning process and go over the traffic situation. That has been done through Lieutenant Porter. Um, there was talk uh, of closing down uh, a section of the road, as you, as you mentioned. Uh, our biggest objection would be that you, you if you were to allow the road to be closed, we, we would also make it mandatory that it would be uh, allowed that emergency vehicles could get through at any time. So it wouldn't be a full closure as far as uh, um, emergency vehicles. It would be enough access for, for them to get by. And I think it would be sporadic road closings, and I think they can uh, confirm that, that it wouldn't be uh, shut down uh, the entire time. I don't mean to sound difficult, but Hopkinton has great notoriety once a year uh, when the world comes to Hopkinton for the Boston Marathon. And we have the media and we have television cameras. We've got everything any community ever wants to see about there. You know, we get plenty of exposure once a year. We like that one day, and they're gone by 4 o'clock, and everyone's happy that we're back to normal at 4 o'clock. 
Um, so I, again, I just don't see what the gain is for the community to shut down of our major roadways uh, to make a movie um, when it's a small scene. And with all due respect to the industry, movies are made the dime a dozen today. This isn't 1935 when you made a movie and you know the whole world was watching because that's the only form of entertainment at that time. Um, I, I'm just really struggling with this one. But you know, we should probably get motion and get going with this one way or the other. Could I just ask, um, the applicant indicated that they, it was a four-hour period. Is there a way that this can be limited within the hours that it's not during morning commute drive time and it's not in that after-school athletic field time? It's, I'm assuming September 7th is probably the first day of school. I mean, can it, could it be done, you know, somewhere between to 10 two. and 2? Kids start back before September 1. No, I'm just saying that that period that's the after commuting time and before the kids are out of school that would be the quietest and the least disruptive. It was made clear to them that, you know, it, hopefully uh, that it wouldn't interfere with any of the peak commuter times or school school times. So they would have to squeeze that for Mr. Hours. Kamal, you mentioned the applicant is here. Could the applicant help us with this? Oh, sure. If you wouldn't mind, please at the podium. Please, thank you. Um, the note that you have is true. We're asking for about a four-hour period for a fairly small scene, and right now we've windowed basically all the daylight hours that time of year in order to film the scene. Um, it probably, we could probably film it outside of the commuter hours. We could uh, definitely make sure that school bus traffic is completely allowed through whether schools letting I know schools start and stop at all different times so school buses would always be allowed to get through the pole gate is not to block traffic it's actually just part of the scene where the the guard is there and there's a gate down otherwise we could just send traffic through when we weren't uh, filming we could hold it for a minute or two intermittent traffic control and let it go but with that pole gate there the intermittent traffic control would probably take closer to five to ten minutes instead of the two to three minutes that people seem to be able to it's that's their comfort level before they start leaning on the horns can um, you get the filming done between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. I can't guarantee that I can get it done between 9 a.m. we have a scene to film that morning at JB Sawmill that would be about four hours also, so that would be like 7 to 11. So I think, you know, realistically, we're probably aiming to be at the uh, on Fruit Street around 10 a.m., but it could be 11, it could be 11.30, and we would ideally be done with that scene in about two and a half hours, but with the vagaries of filmmaking, it could take up to four. So it could take us to three, three or four o'clock. What we could do is try to film the scene, and uh, I can't speak. To, uh, for the creatives, whether they can actually do this. But there's parts of the scene that don't involve the person at the guard booth. So we could try to film that aspect of it and only be using intermittent traffic control after 2 p.m. Okay. I mean, if the, my, my thing is rush hour and after school with the buses and then traffic on Fruit Street, but the, that's... Fruits, there's fields just right where you are there, across the, literally across the street. There's a road going into nowhere, kind of, but there's probably 500 cars going in there between 3 and 5 o'clock, dropping kids off and picking them up from soccer and football and everything else that goes on in there. Uh, so if we could figure out how to get this window more defined and then not stop tra or not redirect traffic outside that window. I, we can, I, I we can absolutely stop redirecting traffic after 2 p.m. and work only if we need it with intermittent traffic control. Okay. Chief, what do you think of that? Absolutely. Uh, as long as, you know, there's no major disruption, uh, disruptions, emergency vehicles get by, they, they're, they're assuring us that buses can get by, and if they're out of there by that time, we'll have the heavy traffic flow of, uh, of kids on that street, then okay. uh, it'll work. Uh, they... Uh, we told them, uh, looking at what they're looking to do, uh, you know, they would have to have plenty of detail offices to uh, 
make sure that uh, when we do the intermittent traffic and close down uh, for, for a little while, that it would certainly be expedited. And, and you'll make sure that the number of officers, you, you decide the number of officers Absolutely. that we need to get that done. You guys are okay with that? Yeah. Okay, so the chair will entertain a motion to approve the parade permit for uh, the Fruit Street movie filming uh, on September 7th between the hours of 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. Uh, where the applicant can redirect traffic, but before 9 a.m. and after 2 p.m., uh, the applicant cannot redirect traffic, but must allow for intermittent traffic as controlled by the Hopkinton Police Department. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Should we perhaps ask that there be some public notice, whether it be up on Hop News or in the paper or something, so the public is aware this is going to happen on that day? We would definitely uh, require that anytime there's any disruption, especially if there's any uh, closing of a road. Okay. We'll You'll do that, that either that way. They're, that they're, that they provide proper signage and notification to the public. Okay. okay. Mr. No, I'm, I'm, I'm good with this. Uh, you know, I think the easy thing is to try to, you know, dig in and, and be a curmudgeon and, and say, you know, the town's not gaining anything from this. But, uh, you know, we also we want to be supportive of the arts, and, and that's what this is. It's uh, an artistic endeavor, and I think we should support it if we can. So. I agree. I'm trying to get past my curmudgeon ways. <laughs> um, everybody else? Good. The only thing that I thought is you said you have a uh, <coughs> scene to film at JB's 7-Eleven. Um, Maybe you film the one on Fruit Street before that, and then uh, JB's after that. To, uh, to I would definitely entertain that. It, that would also be peak hours, I would imagine. It would present all the same problems that we have between 3 and 6, Good. if I'm not incorrect. So I don't know. It, Any other thoughts on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, it's unanimous and so it carries. Thank you. Thanks for your patience there. Okay. Um, all right, so then we had uh, another breakout item from the consent agenda. The Board of Selectmen will affirm the election worker appointments. Our town clerk is here. Uh, Mr. Ted Stone suggested that we have Mr. Holden on that list. Yep. Uh, He's Connor, there. Is that, are you aware that Mr. Holden's moving? I am aware that Mr. Holden is moving. Uh, we have already discussed with him. There's no rules against having election workers that not live in town. Okay. Uh, the only difference would be we'd have to move him from the senior tax credit program to payroll. Okay. And you're okay with that? That's part of your budget? I mean, you can yep. that, it's right? It's part of the election budget. It'll work in fine. And we need another election warden anyway, so we're elevating him to a warden. Gotcha. Mr. Tedstone, you okay with that? I'm good with that, yep. All right. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the election worker appointments as submitted. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, how long are those valid for? Is it just for this, this election? Week. All the appointments are valid for the fiscal year. Okay. So they will expire uh, next year, and then we'll go through this process again. Okay, thanks. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Thank you. Thank you, Connor, for the clarification. Uh, next on the agenda, item number four, the Board of Selectmen will consider accepting the following resignation. Owen Mangan from the Personnel Committee. Mr. Kamalo. Yes, um, Mr. Mangan has been uh, a great asset to the committee. Uh, she has, he, he has been instrumental, in fact, in uh, helping us professionalize uh, some of our processes, uh, given his expertise. And I think this is an opportunity for the to celebrate his contributions as well as, uh, uh, as usual, uh, extend uh, uh, send a letter of gratitude to Mr. Mangan. Absolutely. The chair will entertain a motion to con approve the uh, or accept the resignation of Owen Mangan from the Personnel Committee. Second. And second. Any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Kamal, obviously we would want to get a nice letter out. I'd be happy to sign it on behalf of the board uh, thanking Owen for his contributions. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. It's unanimous. So carries. Item number five. Um, Mr. Kamal, can you introduce the board and the community to this discussion item, please? Yes. Uh, through the chair, uh, let me ask Mr. Ablov to join us at the podium. I, I felt it was important that I bring him to 
uh, meet with the board and introduce himself and his business plan to the community for the following reasons. As we always say, we are open for business. Uh, number two, we have also been looking for opportunities to strengthen uh, our business footprint and commercial footprint here on Main Street. Uh, and, 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 and having uh, Mr. Oplov uh, join the, uh, the business sector on Main Street, I think, is, 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 is a great asset for the community. Uh, and then thirdly, I felt, though, that uh, his, uh, his business plan presents an interesting concept uh, that I needed to bring to the board's attention. Um, number one, I looked around to see if we have any commercial kitchens in town. I couldn't find any. Uh, number two, he's introducing the carry-in aspect to his business, and, and that's a topic that I thought the board would be interested in engaging uh, with uh, Mr. Ablovon. Okay, thank you. Our current policy, when we voted that back a few months ago, the concept of BYOB came up. And at that time, we didn't really take any action directly. We sort of just put it off to the side, correct? That's correct. By doing so, we didn't regulate it yay or nay. We just put it off to the side. We don't have any other BYOBs in town. I'm not aware of any that have been in town the last 15 or 20 years that I've been here. Um, okay. So with that, Mr. Ablov, if you want to just say hello and introduce yourself to talk briefly about your business and your plan, and then uh, we'll kind of take it from there. Absolutely. Um, so first off, thank you to uh, town manager and Maria and to the board for allowing me to come in and introduce myself and talk about my business. I'm the executive chef and owner of the Chef's Kitchen on Main Street, which will be located at 42 Main Street, um, next to Swoon, behind Yogurt Beach. Uh, honestly, couldn't be happier um, about putting my, my business on Main Street and here in Hopkinton. Um, I've been privileged to, to know and, and work in this town for quite some time. Um, I'm very excited about, about the opportunity to really become an active part of the business community and the, uh, the community at large, excuse me, here in Hopkinton. My vision um, is I have a passion for food, and I want to present food experiences to my clients through a variety of means, um, through cooking classes um, for adults as well as kids, through private chefing, through catering, um, through uh, corporate catering, and I've had uh, several discussions with uh, the Hawkinson Center for the Arts about partnering with them and, and their programming um, to bring the you know food and culinary experiences to a, to a broader range of people. Um, as the town manager mentioned, I have had discussions about uh, BYOB um, allowance for my business for on site for the the cooking classes. Um, I want it to be a great experience. I've always been privileged to have food um, be a way of, of expressing myself and opening up relationships with friends and families and colleagues. Um, and I want to be a, a vibrant part of, of this community. Um, again, provide amazing food experiences and, and become a part of Hopkinton. Great. Thank you for that introduction. Mr. Sestar, any thoughts, questions? I don't have any questions. I think it's, uh, I mean, it sounds like an interesting concept that you're trying to bring to town, something different that we don't have, and I don't know of uh, being in any of the area towns. So uh, um, I'm, I'm just a, a hobbyist in terms of being a foodie, but uh, it sounds pretty interesting. Thank you. Good luck. Right. Uh, it's a really interesting concept. It sounds like a really nice contribution to the downtown and the town. Um, I just kind of curious as to um, when there would be food consumed and the BYOB, would that be when there is a cooking class and then your students eat the meal that they prepared, or when would people be dining in? Yes, yeah, so the dining in will take place at, during the cooking classes. Um, so typically they're three to four hours duration. Um, the folks come in, um, the maximum occupancy of no more than 12. Uh, we have a preset menu, and we spend time um, in the back of the house in the commercial kitchen preparing and, and cooking the food and then plating the food. Um, the front of the house will be a big family 12-foot uh, farmer's table, um, trying to make it that, that home away from home concept. And that's where if my patrons would like you know, the opportunity to enjoy a glass of wine with the meals that, that they're bringing to the table. So it would be in conjunction with eating the results of your cooking class, basically. There won't be any walk-in off the street restaurant type. No, ma'am. I'm not, I'm not a restaurant. I'm yeah. not a bar. Um, that's, not my, that's not my business 
model. Um, I'm not equipped to do any of it, and, and quite honestly, I'm not interested in running a restaurant. But there will be, um, you will also have food available for purchase and takeaway that is prepared there, or is it strictly uh, uh, right, right now, Right now, I don't have a retail component in my business plan. So it'll be either the private chefing or the in-house classes where then your students eat, eat the meal that they've prepared. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Sounds neat. Mr. Ted Stone. The only thing I thought of is a liability Who's, if someone comes in and, and has a, goes through a cooking class and has two or three bottles of wine really quick, who's... Uh... Yes, so, so you know, first off, um, I, hopefully nobody will be having two or three bottles of, of wine um, during the cooking classes. I do have all the appropriate um, um, insurance policies um, taken out in conjunction with, with this business through through a reputable firm. Um, I'll have my serve safe alcohol certification as well. Um, you know, I, I can tell you that I'll have processes in place to make sure that our, our limitations, um, as well as contingency plans with regard to local transportation services that are available. Um, you know, my background is, I, I, this is this is my business. This is how I put food on my family's table. I'm not gonna risk it for, for, over, for over a glass or two. Sounds like you've done your research. Thank you. Absolutely. Mr. Catino. Yeah, this is really great out of the box uh, thinking for that uh, that spot because people were worried that um, for, for to have a full service restaurant there may not be enough parking, and, uh, the traffic, and all that. So this is this is just a really great concept, something that the that the town really think could use yeah, culturally, and and, and um, uh, it's just a, a nice little gem. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. People downtown. So, Mr. Sister. Yeah, I just had a couple more thoughts. Um, so, I guess, what are, uh, what are the legal restrictions around something like this? Is it basically, and I'm, and I'm not trying to put anything into your business plan, uh, you know, or, or assume that it's in there, but um, by us not having any restrictions, are there literally no restrictions? Uh, is it just beer and wine? Is there hard alcohol allowed? Um, what's allowed with the BYOB? Um, in fact, based on my conversations with Mr. Ablov, he has indicated that he will only allow beer and wine. There will be no hard liquor. Uh, in That's great, and I'm happy to hear that. But, you know, a year and a half down the road, you know, the, the big trend might be you know, whiskey pairing with, you know, seafood or something. I don't know. And and so he might think, well, you know, I could probably do some of that. Not saying you would. Understood, yes, sir. <laughs> just going hypothetical here. And so I'm just wondering what are the what are the legal restrictions um, so that we as a board can think about that. Uh, and when we're looking at our alcohol policies, we can possibly address those if, if we want. Possibly the board could look into uh, limiting the types of alcohol allowed, mm -hmm. limiting the, uh, the number of glasses that could be saved. Uh, also, I've seen other communities where they actually look into the, 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 the hours where the BOIB could be allowed. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think in addition, we'll rely on the TIP certification uh, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good instrument that we've relied on uh, in other instances. Mm -hmm. uh, the town does have an opportunity to develop its own regulations. Right. Okay. Thank you. So there's no license involved? No license involved. And because there's no license involved, how can the board protect the community outside the good intentions of the owner like we do elsewhere? I mean, there's alcohol being consumed in a public place where the public can walk in the front door. Uh, how do we how do we control that? How do we regulate that? There's one of the obvious option. The the policy that the board approved takes effect January first uh, of next year. Uh, and I, I do believe strongly that at the time the board decided not to develop any regulations for carry-in uh, events, uh, at that point, um, 
we had not anticipated having one show up immediately. Um, <laughs> And so my, my recommendation to the board is uh, there's still an opportunity to, to revisit the regulation. Uh, I, I think given the fact that we have had an applicant come forth, we now have a better understanding of what this entails and therefore are more informed uh, in terms of what regulations could be put forth. So, so is it, is it um, but he wants to get going sooner than that. Our policy is set to take effect January 1. Um, he wants to get going sooner than that. He could proceed with the understanding that a policy is going to come in place if the board is so inclined that's going to limit it to beer and wine and it's going to limit maybe the hours to the same hours as other restaurants in the community, which would be perfectly fine for, your, I think, your model. Um, something along those lines. Does that sound like a reasonable approach to everybody? Yeah, well, and I, and I would think that even with respect to the regulations that we that we did specifically address, uh, you know, those are things that we can change as we move along. Uh, you know, we chose to bring those into effect as of next year for simplicity and fairness. Uh, and I would I would anticipate that we would try to do the same as we move forward with something like this. Yeah. You know, again, that's not to say that uh, uh, taking a look at those regulations and having them be effective this January first isn't fair. I think that that's still fair, but I also think that we would be working with Mr. Ablov and, you know, trying to, I mean, his, his plan isn't anything that's extreme, you know, that yeah, tell us we're, that work we're getting, you that we're getting yeah. frightened over. So Mr. I think that we can, can all work us. together and Absolutely. figure something out that works. Together. Okay. Yes. So let's, let's do it with that. <clears throat> Tonight we're just having this discussion, but with that, with this discussion, if we all understand that what we're going to Go in, it's going to go into effect January 1. We'd like to up the ante a little bit and make sure BYOB is covered in that new policy, and we'd certainly take your input to make it work for everybody, and then we'll be able to codify it in a yeah. policy that's consistent for the town. Does that work for everybody? Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. Ms. Hayes, you had a comment. Um, and actually, I've never mentioned this before, but um, I'm a certified planner, planner, certified state certified, and I've actually done what Shemmy has done in dozens of I've actually done it at Clark's Kitchen and Milford that's all locally here in Hop my Hop residence. These are not where well, how you refer to people who are walking up the street. These are actually private free paid events and it's like a dinner for twelve after they've ready to. So it, it's like having a dinner party at your house that Shepley came in and taught. Mm. And I'm, I'm actually gonna be doing one on allergen awareness somewhere else. That's gonna be a benefit to keep smile for Abby. I've been doing these for years for charities. Um, there's never been an issue and it's always even in the menu, it's always been, bring your favorite Chardonnay to pair with this, bring your favorite, and it's always been kept that way. I have never seen anyone show up with, and they usually come as couples, more than one bottle. And this is probably 20-something years ago. Yeah, okay, good. Thank you for that input. Okay, so with that, I think we can close the discussion. Uh, thank you for introducing the business to us and to the community. You. We wish you the best. I'm sure you'll be very successful there. Thank you. And we look forward to working with you uh, through the town manager, Mr. Kamala, if you could reach out to Mr. Ablov and as we get down the path a little bit, getting ready for this policy to be implemented, that we would include a BYOB sec uh, clause, if you will. Okay? Everybody good? Yes. All right, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Item number six, notices of taking. The board, I'm going to read this one. The Board of Selectmen will consider issuing notices of taking for the following takings of private ways. Connolly Hill Road, Valleywood Road, which was formerly Valleywood Drive, Carol Ann Drive, Cary Lane, and Nancy Lane, together with easements for drainage, utility, and other purposes. Said takings are the final administrative step made pursuant to Article 47 of the May 2nd, 2015 Annual Town Meeting and the orders of taking adopted by the Board on July 12, 2016, both of which have been recorded at the Middlesex Registry of Deeds. So, this is a very administrative, uh, perfunctory step in the process of getting some roads under the control of the community, which everybody wants, because that way we can take care of them and cover them and so forth. So with that, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the notices of takings as presented this evening. So moved. So, so, second. I'm sorry, Mr. Kamal, we actually have a motion on that one, don't we? Yes, there's a motion and just point of correction. Uh, this 
action or step is being taken pursuant to Article 47 of the May 2nd, 2016. One six oh, 2016. Little typo there, okay. So the, who, who made the motion? I did. Mr. Ted Stone, it's 2016, May 2nd, right? Roger that. And who seconded it? Okay, but we actually want to table that motion, Mr. Kamala, and go with the motion in front of us, don't we? Yeah, so, um, all right, how should we do this? Well, all right, there's a motion on the table, uh, and the chair sought that motion, and it was the wrong motion. So my mistake. Withdraw. Yeah, they can withdraw. Everybody, everybody good just dropping that motion? Yes. Don't need, no, don't need to vote nothing. Okay, so that motion's off the table. Okay, Mr. Ted Stone. Oh, consider that motion, boy, please. That's great. With, begin with I. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to issue notices of taking as contemplated by Mass General Law uh, 797C for the following takings of private ways. Connolly Hill Road, Valleywood Road, formerly Valleywood Drive, Carroll Ann Drive, Cary Lane, and Nancy Lane, together with easements for drainage, utility, and other purposes. Said takings are made pursuant to Article 47 of the May 2nd, 2016 Annual Town Meeting, a certified copy of which was recorded on July 19, 2006 at the Middlesex Registry of Deeds, Southern District at Book 67642, page 100, and the orders of taking the, adopted by this road by the Board on July 12, 2016, and recorded on July 19, 2016 at the Middlesex Registry of Deeds, Southern District at Book 67642, page 101, Book 67642, page 103, Book 67642, page 105, Book 67642, page 107, and Book 67642, page 109, respectively. Now I know who can read good motions. Thank you. By Keith Tech Education. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second for the notices of taking. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Thank you, Mr. Ted Stone. Can I have that motion back, please, Chief? Okay, item number seven. Uh, we're going to hold a joint meeting between the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health. We currently have one vacancy on the Board of Health, and we need to fill that vacancy through the balance of that term. Mr. Kamalo, the balance of that term is when? will expire at the May 27th annual town election. This coming year? Yes. Okay, so basically we're going to make an appointment, perhaps we're going to make an appointment this evening for the one vacancy on the Board of Health. That appointment would go from the time the individual is sworn in until the election next spring. 2017. 2017. Yes. And then that individual, if they decide, could, you know, run for re-election beginning in the spring or whenever it is they want to decide to campaign um, and uh, for a full term thereafter. So the, the appointment tonight is just for one position for basically less than a year, You're looking at nine months. Mr. Sestari. Through the chair, uh, Mr. Kamalo, is, does the term for that seat expire next May or is it because we only uh, appoint someone for the seat until the next annual town election? It's the latter, okay. relative to the action that the board has taken. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. So there's, um, there's the term of that seat, the person who is holding that seat. Right. And then there's just the next annual town election. Right. And I was asking, is the appointment, does the appointment officially go till the next annual town election, or does the appointment go through the term of um, that seat? and it's the next annual town election. So it doesn't complete the term, it just goes right. to the next election. So no then, in the, how next, many years then in, a, in the next election, that seat will be up, uh, but it might only be a two-year. Uh, for an unexpired term, whatever right. that. I see means. what you're saying, I got you, okay. All right, so I didn't explain it well. So this individual, Mr. Winchman's term, when does that expire? Anybody know? I think two year, uh, three, three Mr. Tina was saying 2019, May 2019. So May 2019. So so when we appoint, if we appoint tonight, if we appoint tonight, and I hope we do, but I'm just covering myself at the moment. Uh, if we appoint tonight, 
we will not appoint to finish the term. We will appoint to the next election cycle, and then that individual or others could run for the finish the term, which will be then another two expired years, term. an unexpired yeah. term. Excellent actually, point. And actually, it would have to be 2018, because this year's would have been 2018. Right, right. I think so it's they'll then run for an unexpired term, which would be a shorter term than a typical yeah. three-year term. Right. Got it. Okay, so with that, I invite our colleagues from the Board of Health that are here this evening to join us here um, and uh, ask that the Board of Health call themselves sure. to order. Right up here, if you would, please, Jen. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you guys. Call our meeting to order. All right. Um, if you would just grab a seat there, that would be great. And then, um, if you guys want to turn your chairs, we, this was awkward last time we did this, so let's <laughs> fix that right now. Um, and so, so these guys are in session now. We have been in session, but I would ask, and I'll just make sure I get this right, Mr. Kamalo, that the collective body that, that we're now going to deliberate uh, through uh, name me as the chair of the joint meeting. So I need a motion for that. So moved. Second. So the motion is second for, for myself to serve as the chair of the joint meeting, and we all vote on this. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so I'll continue to serve as the chair of the joint meeting. Mr. Good, chair, Mr. Kamalo? just a question on uh, order. Um, how many members does the Board of Health have? Three. Okay. Just wanted to make sure that there was a quorum, quorum and they're, they're okay. good to go. Even, yeah, yeah, so I think we're fine right now. Just wanted to make Mr. sure. Mr. Kamal, are we good? We're good. You're good with the procedural part? And I think yep. May 2018 is Right, so May 2018, but we're really only going to appoint from now until 2017, mm -hmm. and then someone will run for election in 17, May of 17, for one more year to May of 18, and then it'll start a full term thereafter, after another election. So there's a few election cycles coming here for some, some anyway. Okay, so, um, so we're good, Mr. Kamalo. Everybody's on the same page. Uh, does anybody have any sort of uh, thoughts or ideas they want to share specific to the appointment process itself? This will be similar to how we did the planning board, where it's, we, we write our votes down who we're going to do, or I know we're only appointing one, but... That's why we're asking, that's why I'm asking the question. Um, Mr. Sestari, do you have any <laughs> thoughts on this? <laughs> 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 it helped us through the last process. Yeah, I would suggest that we ask Mr. Kamala what we did again. <laughs> if you wanted. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm not sure I remember. It was so complicated, though. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, the process was laid out as follows. The individual candidates came up, explained why they were running for the seat, and then after that, the board went through a process of a combination of balloting as well as announcing who they were uh, voting for. And they went that, they, they applied that method going down the list of the candidates who were before the board. We did it in both the written and verbal form yes. because we had multiple candidates and we kind of almost had to go through a process of elimination. I don't mean that to sound the way it did, but you know, we had to kind of sort through it a little bit. Tonight we have one position to appoint, and we have two candidates, three, three candidates, three. sorry, three candidates. So um, do we have to have it in both the written and verbal form, do you think, or do we have any thoughts? Well, I, think last time, I think last time what we were doing was uh, we, we did the written so that everybody would vote essentially at the same time and there wouldn't be any, you know, jumping the gun to – get a nomination out there before anybody else does. And then everybody submitted those and they were all read off uh, with the name of the person who voted and who they voted for. So there was one nomination early on to put everybody's name into. Uh, yeah, I think, I, think, I think the way we did it was uh, there was there was a motion to accept uh, the outcome uh, as long as the winner had a majority of votes. Didn't we have a, a standing nomination for all the candidates? 
tend to remember, um, can we count for every candidate? Let's go back to the tape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I thought there was, there was counting for each and every candidate. But we had a nomination so that we could count each candidate. In other words, we can't vote, and I'm sorry we're having to go through this. This is just part of the deal. We can't vote on an individual unless someone nominates that individual and seconds that individual. No, in this, in the vision that, that the board applied last time, um, the, the individuals were, were listed as if they were running on a ballot. So they were, they, there was a ballot with the different names and then people were voting. So that, 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 that's different from the procedure that the board has adopted for um, um, electing um, um, or appointing people to uh, a position when you have more than one candidate. Okay. Yeah. So is the joint committee open to the idea of uh, putting all three names into nomination? Yes. 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 Everybody good with that? Same thing, basically. Yep. It's just simpler. Okay, we'll put all three names. We won't do it. We'll hear from everybody. We'll put all, when we get to it, we'll put all three names in the nomination, and we'll second that. Someone will do that, right? And then, um, and then we'll vote on paper. Uh, I think we not. did. Yeah, I think to me it doesn't matter if we do paper or roll call. Um, yeah. I think we did paper so that people would just put their vote down. Yeah. You know, without hearing the way the vote was going. I think the multiple candidates kind of help keep yeah. that organized. I think with one position, or multiple spots, yep. with one position, I think if we just take the vote based on all three, we'll go, each, we'll go in alphabetical order with the names of the three individuals, and we'll cast our votes that way. That's fine. And so we have seven members of the joint committee. So let's talk this through now, right? So the winner has to have four votes. Minimum. Minimum. Okay. And uh, what am I forgetting here? It doesn't. I don't think that the winner does have to have seven. Because if... No, no, four. I'm sorry. The winner doesn't have to have four. Because if we all vote and um, two vote for player A, two vote for player B, that leaves us three. That leaves three left. No, so but by, we'll get it. But but in order for it to be a valid motion and for the motion uh, for the motion to carry, you have to have a majority of the voting population. Have a so that point, you have another round. So we have to we have to get to the point where there's four for okay. one person. Okay. So here's what I think we should do. Um, excellent question, and I Thank think you. you're right. I think maybe we should write this down each round because we might get into a couple rounds. I don't know. Right? Mm -hmm. Just to help us keep it organized? Does that make sense? It does. Yep. And we're going to say it right out as we do it, but let's just write it down. Uh, so, Ms. Lazarus, if you could just maybe when we get to that point, and hopefully we do that soon, um, <laughs> you could just record, you, know, you write it, if you could write it down, and then we can go back and say, all right, who was where. Mm -hmm. But I think you're right. We have to get to four eventually to have that majority support the nomination which we all agreed would be putting everybody's name into it when we when we agree to put everyone's name into nomination we have to get to a four person minimum vote okay i'm going to come to the audience make sure we're all okay with the process for <laughs> once we sort sorted out and i'm interested in hearing from the town clerk on this too um but are we good with the, i think yes. everybody okay yep. for right now connor do you have any thoughts about the process that we're describing? I see no problem with the process so long as everyone, every board member's vote is known, then there's no breach of a meeting law. Everything should be perfectly a board. Okay. Thank you. And somebody, yes. Are you going to have to talk to advance the second round? We're going to have to talk. Well, if somebody doesn't get four, then we're going to go to a second round. It could be three, three, one. Um, then the top two would go. Well, 
<laughs> let's let's think that but through though. If yeah. we put all, but if it's three two two, then there's <laughs> we put three names in the nomination <laughs> up front, and that gets a second. That's the motion on the table that we're trying to work on. I don't know if you can, can we can we just take the top two then? Yeah, because if they're yeah, let's let's. Let's, give it a shot. let's try. Yeah. Let's try it, and then let's see if we get. Yeah. Then we can ask questions. So, 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 but making up the process as we go along is not a good idea. Yeah. I think we have to agree with what we're going to do before we start taking votes. If that can get a little, third, if there, touchy. if there are two people who have more votes than the third person, <laughs> then the third person will be dropped off, and it'll be brought to those two. If um, if there's one person who's ahead and then the other two have the same number of votes, we've got to keep them in there. And we'll just... Okay, one more time. Down. So just using real number examples, if it's 3-3-1, uh, three, three, one, the one gets dropped out. If it's 3-2-2, two, two, everybody's still in there. And we just have to go through it again. That makes sense. Does that make sense? Make sense to everybody? Yep. Mr. Kamala? Yes. Um, one procedural step. The board has a standing regulation on how to conduct elections or appointments when there are multiple vacants, uh, um, um, ap applicants. And so the board will need to suspend that stand standing regulation and adopt this new procedure that well, yeah, I want to have a Just motion please. specific to the process we're going to follow, which is what we did with the planning board, to make sure everybody was in agreement before we proceed to the vote piece of it. Um, okay. All right. So I'm going to try and <laughs> craft the motion that we would all then vote on. So the chair will entertain a motion uh, for the appointment of the Board of Health member to serve through... May of 2017 that the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Health suspend their typical uh, appointment procedures and adopt the following. All three names, all three applicants' names will be put uh, into nomination and seconded by the Joint Committee. And then the Joint Committee will vote in the first round uh, first round vote will be recorded by the town manager's office and depending upon the the tally of the first round um, whoever gets four if, if there's a person that gets four votes they are appointed if there's lesser votes and there's some kind of tie in that lesser vote count we'll go to a second round Possibly with all three votes, all three nominees. But if one of the nominees only gets one or two votes and the others get a higher number, then that third lowest count vote person would be excluded from the second round. Okay, thank you. I need my calculator for that. Um, so that's the, I think the motion that the chair would entertain. <laughs> Mr. Caballo, is that a good motion that I should entertain? Yes. It, it covers all the aspects that the board appeared to be building a consensus on. Suspending the standing regulation. All three candidates will be nominated and seconded and placed on a ballot. Um, the, there will be a first round of vote uh, by all the seven members, and that vote will be recorded by the town manager office staff. If any of the candidates receives four or more votes, they are then appointed as the winning candidate. And if 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 the if there are lesser votes, meaning if there the, is a three-two vote or two-two-one vote. Um, then we will move to a second round. Uh, however, if any of the candidates receives only one vote, they will then be excluded from the second round. 
That's pretty much what I said. Thank yeah. you. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, I think. Is there a second? So who wants to make that motion? So moved. We have a motion, and we have a second on the table for the motion for the procedure. Any discussion amongst the joint committee about the motion and the second? Everybody good? Okay, breaking with a little bit of protocol. I want to go to the public, those that are interested here tonight. Is there anyone from the public that has any thoughts about the motion and the second on the table? So we're all in agreement with the process we're going to follow. So if the process gets a little messy, we've all agreed to this. And no one can yell, right? <laughs> okay, just want to make sure. All right. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So it's unanimous vote of seven to support the process outlined in the motion. Okay. With that. Why don't we have our candidates join us now, those that are able to join us at the podium. Uh, let's start. Mr. Kamal, can you give me the names of the three candidates, please? Mr. Cohen, uh, Ms. Mr. Enstrom, Ms. Whitemore. Okay, so who is here this evening? I see one hand up. And the names again, please, Mr. Kamal. I can't get my... Yeah, Mr. Cohen, Mr. En Enstrom, uh, and Ms. Whitemore. Whittemore. Whittemore, sorry. Whittemore. Yeah. Okay. Um, does anybody know the, the um, status of the other candidates and any reason why they could not make it this evening? Then Mr. Uh, Cohen's office sent a note that says that the schedule did not allow him to... Make it at 7.30. Okay. Anybody else have any other um, input? Mr. Kamal, do you have any input on any of the candidates? No. Okay. So with that, we have one candidate can, that was able to join us this evening. If you could come to the podium, please, and introduce yourself and let us know of your interest in serving the community on the Board of Health, please. So, thank you for that. Uh, my name is Lisa Woodamore. I live on Hayward Street. I've lived in Hopkinton for about 20 years. Um, I am a clinical social worker by background, and I have a master's degree in public health from Harvard. I have worked for the past 30 years professionally in a variety of healthcare environmental situations, including um, running and managing clinics, working with the Department of Public Health with uh, federal regulations. I've also opened clinics where they've had kitchens and had to go through Board of Health processes to be certified. And I've worked very closely with environmental spills and sick building syndromes in one clinic that I ran in uh, Newton, Massachusetts. I also worked at a community health center in Boston, uh, ushered them f through their first quality um, improvement process with the Joint Commission for Accreditation of Hospitals and other health care organizations. I have a deep commitment to public health to making sure that regulations are both reasonable but uh, and followed. Um, and I really would like to give back to the town of Hopkinton after having been here for 20 years. So that's, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer Great. them. Thank you for that intro. Um, why don't we go with some questions for the candidate? Uh, why don't we start with our colleagues on the Board of Health first and see if you guys have any questions. Hi. Hi, John. So I um, actually would like to learn from the board, and I'd like to learn more about what's going on locally in the town as more and more businesses come into town, including the model of business that was just you know brought here. I, I'd like to learn more about what's going there. I think I bring um, my my work right now is national. I do healthcare consulting. Um, so I think I bring to the town sort of an understanding of what's going on in other parts of the country as well as here. Thanks, Jen. Anybody else? Um, thank you for your interest. Um, for the University School of Public Health, what was your master's in there? What, what it, 
was in healthcare management. Um, however, you know, as a public health degree, you have to take environmental health risk management. Um, I also am certified in process improvement and in a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> so. Anything else? We can come back if you want to think about this. Mr. Ted Stone, any questions? Do you see any deficiencies that the board is doing right now that you want to fix? I do not. I don't know enough to answer that question with anything more than no. Sure. Mr. Catino? Yes, yeah, seeing that the, actually that, that the Board of Health here in Hopkinton is, is probably a, a large percentage of septic systems. It's uh, actually it's almost all septic. We help people. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people can think that that, that it's that there's more to do with restaurants and stuff like that, where that's just so minor compared to people um, residents looking for relief from so, from sometimes some draconian. Uh, Mean Title Five. Bylaws <laughs> and such, you know, and you know, and, and that's really what goes to, uh, what what comes up, and what, you know, sort of what you said is that uh, having the knowledge to what can be allowed and what what shouldn't be allowed to, because some people just need relief if they're putting a, a library on their house, but they have to come before the Board of Health because they added one more room to change the, uh, the whole septic system. So uh, do you have any background in? Not in septic. I don't have background in septic, but I do spend a lot of time reading uh, rules and regulations and trying to interpret them as part of my the work that I do. Um, Recently, for example, I've been reading all the new Medicaid regulations and waivers trying to figure that through. And I think a little bit, it's not the same, but the process is the same because you have to be able to understand what the regulations are doing and then figuring out how they dovetail with the bylaws in town and how is it going to best serve that individual's need. Have any questions? Uh, you said that you're a consultant and you travel nationally. Uh, how's that going to work with the schedule of the Board of Health? I have the best travel schedule, and I think I've been out of town seven nights in the last year, so Great. I'm able to do a lot remotely. Great. Um, I'm going to New York City on Friday, and I don't think I, ha I have some travel scheduled in um, September, but it is not onerous. Yeah. Um, Great. Well, Telephone I, and Skype is an amazing thing. I appreciate your stepping up. I appreciate your uh, being here tonight uh, for us to meet you before we vote. Um, and I don't have any further questions. Thank you. So when you, when you get appointed to an elected position, you're kind of going through the election process with the very next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or less. Um, so please... Kind of bear with me as I ask some of this. What are your views on the overall development of Hopkinton today? So I think that development of Hopkinton needs to be carefully measured. I, uh, I am a strong supporter of open space. I believe that we need small businesses that are locally run brought into town and fewer national chains. I believe that we have to figure out how to maintain a vibrant business culture. We have a single rate tax system here so that it's not as though businesses are going to offset or because of the way our tax structure is, it's, it's not different. But I think that, I think that growth is fine. Um, I live over on the side of town that is zoned for commercial growth. Um, I, you know, I, I was not a big fan of the price chopper complex going in and I will tell you that I patronize it a lot and it's very convenient. I worry about traffic in town with with that and I worry about the traffic patterns. I, I can hear directly from the train and the reason why I did is you cannot get up 85 at this hour to get here and go back to Lake Maspinock and then come back right over here. Those are my views. Okay, thank you. Um, and in terms of the electoral process, Oh, I'm sorry. I was eating candy earlier. Uh, in terms of the electoral process, 
What are your thoughts about running for election in 2017? I know that's ways out, but what do you think about that? So I, it's 2017. I mean, frankly, I would need to figure out what's going on both personally and professionally to commit to that, but I am certainly open to that process. I don't want to just do this for eight or nine months and then ride off into the sunset and say, well, I did that. Um, if, if I am appointed, I am committed to seeing this through, and I have every intent today with everything I know to run. Have you thought about running in 2016? In 2016, this past election. I did not think about running this past election. I had just changed jobs about six months prior, and uh, my mom died about a year ago. So I was just sort of in all of that stuff. Sorry to hear that. No, it was okay. fine. Thank you, though. Uh, and have you done any other volunteer work? You may have mentioned this, or it could be in the application, but other stuff in the community. What are the things? I'm on the done? Town Democratic Committee. Um, I've been ac active in the Lake Maspinock Preservation Association pulling weeds and doing other things like that. Um, I'm on the board of directors of a community health center in Boston that serves the Alston-Brighton area. Um, I was the head of the Department of Mental Health Lynn area board years ago. Um, so I've done a lot of different stuff. And how about your thoughts about the weed control situation in the lake? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are really... I told you, this is a campaign in 15 minutes. <laughs> So I actually was the author of the amendment at town meeting in 2015 that created the weed committee. I wanted to make sure that we studied that issue very carefully before we moved ahead and we did something. So the, the weed committee has been studying and I th I'm looking forward to their final recommendations, which I think are coming out in a couple so of months. Are we. And I <laughs> and I think that's the way we should have done it. That it was a town wide process pocket. under the auspices of the selectmen to bring people together with varying views to come up with a comprehensive weed plan, not just throwing pesticides into a lake. And that may be the recommendation and I would be fine if that is a considered recommendation but at least it's a studied recommendation. Okay, great, thank you. Sure? Um, Lisa, how do you feel about uh, working with other boards and joining with other boards, like say we have to work with the parks and rec board, we have to work with the select and do you have experience doing sort of cross-functional teamwork? Yeah, um, I've run cross-functional teams. I, I was trained as a therapist for, and worked clinically for the first 20 years of my career. So um, I do a lot of cross-functional work, and as a consultant, it is nothing but cross-functional work. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions for the candidate? Thank you very much for Thank coming you. in this evening. And the other candidates, uh, Mr. Enstrom um, or Dr. Cohen, still are not with us this evening, correct? Okay. All right, so with that, we'll close the uh, candidate input. Uh, Mr. Kamal, with the absence of these two candidates, do you have an issue with the board and joint committee proceeding? You, can you see any procedural reason why we wouldn't proceed? The only question I have is uh, when Mr. Cohen indicated he could not make this meeting, did he indicate that he still would like to be considered? That's the only question I have. Okay. So uh, the chair will take the uh, uh, role of just giving a brief comment on each of the other candidates based on the information I have in front of me. Uh, Dr. Cohen uh, has expressed an interest in returning to the Board of Health. He was an elected individual serving on the Board of Health for... He was... Yeah. Can, can, so we agreed to a process earlier. The process didn't, agree, didn't include kind of back and forth, right? So let's just stick with the process, please. Dr. Cohen served on the Board of Health. Uh, I believe he was appointed, and then you had to be reelected just like this person would be or appointed. Um, okay, so Mr. Kamal, I want to get this fact straight. Was Dr. Cohen an appointed member of the Board of Health, or was he elected or both? Let me check. Let me check. So I think that we had, we had ironed this out earlier during our meeting, and he was, in fact, elected. There was, um, I think it was Deb Holbrook had resigned midterm as well. Then we had a volunteer come in who had served on the remainder of that term, and then we had an election that was un, uh, unopposed. Okay. It was just for the one year remaining in that term. One year remaining. Okay, so he was elected to that one year term. 
And then was he reelected? Yeah. No, that was it. So he served one year. He served one year as appointed. He finished out a year appointed. And then, then ran unopposed. And was elected again. And was elected. And was elected. Yes. Okay. When you went, whether you're opposed or unopposed does not matter. Okay. You were either elected or you weren't. Okay, so I don't want to get into the opposed, unopposed thing. That is not relevant. So he was elected. He was re-elected. No. no. He was elected after he was appointed for the one year. Then he was elected. Yeah. And, and then he ran again and lost. Got it. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Who you? Ed can clarify. I think that, I think we're, we're, I don't think Ed, can you join us at the microphone, please? Can you share some knowledge uh, about Dr. this? Dr. Cohen was uh, elected. Uh, Prior to Dr. Cohen, we had Nasabi, who was an appointed member by the board. She finished to the election, and then Dr. Cohen ran for the one year and was elected. He then went to run for the three-year position and was lost to Jennifer Flanagan. So he, okay. was, not, he was not appointed, he was elected. And okay, year. so that is Dr. Cohen's history with the Board of Health. Does everyone agree to that? Okay, Mr. Enstrom, uh, and obviously he's a resident of the town of Hopkinton. Mr. Enstrom uh, is a resident of the town of Hopkinton. Uh, I'm not familiar with Mr. Ren Enstrom uh, in the moment here, so if anybody has any knowledge of Mr. Enstrom's activities uh, in the community, please do share them. Um, he currently works uh, in uh, the food service industry uh, here in Massachusetts. Does anybody have any knowledge of Mr. Enstrom's activities in the community? Okay, so those are our other two candidates. So, um, with that introduction and with an agreed upon process that we have in place, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to place all three names into nomination to fill the uh, open seat on the Board of Health so until moved. May of 2017. Second. So we have a motion and a second to place all three names in nomination. Mr. Kamala, do we need to vote that motion to place all three names in nomination, or is the actual appointment process that vote? It's, I think it's, it's, it's appropriate for the Board to vote the motion. Okay, so does everybody understand what we're doing? We're just voting the motion to put them all in. Um, I don't think that was necessarily in my motion earlier that we all agreed to, but I want to make sure we're good with this that piece of the puzzle. Right? Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. All those in favor of the motion on the table, then put all three in nomination, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, all three names are in nomination. With that, um, and I think I mentioned when we were talking about this earlier, we would go down the list in alphabetical order and name the individuals, and then we would vote as we go through that. Um, yeah, we can. We can. Let me just get the order first. So Dr. Cohen, uh, Mr. Enstrom, and Ms. Whittemore, correct? Did I get it right? Whittemore. Ms. Whittemore. Okay, so we have three names in nomination. Who would like to begin the discussion uh, of the various candidates? This is right. Well, I just wanted to say something in, in Dr. Cohen's behalf. Um, I think we're very fortunate to have three candidates, all of whom are qualified. Um, Mr. Enstrom, um, who is not here, has quite a number of years of experience in, in food handling and food processing, which is extremely relevant. And Ms. Whittemore has some excellent experience as well. Um, but it, it just, I just wanted to speak regarding Dr. Cohen because um, Dr. Cohen not only has served on the board, but he ran um, beyond our seven votes here Dr. Cohen received a vote of confidence from 795 people in this town to be selected to serve on the Board of Health. Um, he was only, the only difference in the vote total was a small nine vote difference. Um, he went through the debates, he 
went through all the election processes, he was really willing to do the work to earn the position. And um, it was admirable. And um, I think there is really something to be said for someone who's willing to step up and go through the election process. And um, I, the fact that almost a thousand people in this town gave a vote of confidence to Dr. Cohen, um, I think should be weighed in this board's consideration um, and hoping that all others will certainly continue to serve. But I think that is a, a significant endorsement that goes far beyond the seven people in this room. Thank you. Mr. Sestari. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I know Dr. Cohen, um, very, very intelligent individual, nice guy, and I appreciate the work that he's done on the board. Uh, I also appreciate that he put the time and effort in to run for re-election uh, this past year. Um, I also appreciate the experience that Ms. Whittemore uh, outlined and her qualifications. And, uh, you know, prior to Ms. Wright speaking, uh, you know, I was, I was very easily going to say that, uh, you know, presence at this meeting uh, certainly, certainly carries a, a big weight in terms of my vote. Um, then you start talking about 795 people voting for someone else, and it certainly makes it more uh, more of a difficult decision. Um, you know, this is this is something where it's one of our difficult decisions, right? Uh, and it's that's why we get paid the big bucks here. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, you know, that's that's where my thought process is right now, um, and and I can't say exactly which side of the track I'm going to fall on. I'd like to hear more input from others. Okay. Um, it's kind of going around the table now, if that's all right. So I would and we can say, come back to others, too. We're not just um, one thing. I know Dr. Cohen, and I think he's a great guy. Um, obviously, I work closely with him. He's a lot of time with them. Um, I want to say that Lisa's advantage is only to be, first of all, she's been in town 20 years, where Dr. Cohen's been in town all the years. So it's all about knowing the town, really understanding the town, the dynamics of the town. And I would say that I know that Lisa is extremely connected to the town. And I honestly think that's really important. I think one of the reasons that I won, albeit only by nine votes, is because of how connected I am with the town. It's not because I was more qualified than them. I always see these connections. And I think that really means a lot um, in terms of the dynamic of how you interact with the community. So that to me is important. Um, I also think that Lisa's qualifications are outstanding. I mean, her her you know, double master's degree. Harvard social work, and I just think everything that, and all of her public health and her knowledge of the, the government aspect of all this is really, really impressive. Where, yes, Dr. Cohen is a surgeon, but I believe that Lisa's skill set applies itself far more specifically to the needs of this position. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I think, and I've said it before, that I think everybody has to remember that we are volunteers. This takes away time for photography. Yeah, huge. But we take, we're, we're taking time away from our families, from our jobs, from the things that we do at the end of the day. No one to make this a better community, a better school system, a better, a safer place to be. Um, you know what? Having worked with Bill for that period of time that he was on the board, I felt like he had added a wonderful balance to the board in terms of our backgrounds and our skill sets and, and what we can bring to the table and helping um, town processes move along. I thought that that was helpful. Um, your skill set is incredible, absolutely, and I, I can have all over my work all the years. Um, you know, and I, I also listen to Claire, I listen to the attendance, and it's, it's, it, to me, is a tough decision based on, um, you know, continuity. I think, uh, as a chiropractor, I think of continuity and care. I think of continuity of a board. I think of Phil would very easily be assimilated back into the process of um, what is relevant. And I think that we, we cannot look at his degree just as a medical doctor. Um, it, it would like be only looking at him as a social worker. You know, there's many layers to what it is that, that he's gone through his education and life experience. So I think that we can say, yeah, you know, on face value, he's an MD, but there's, there's a lot of other things that he's had to do to get to that period of time. Um, so, so that's my opinion. It's, it's not very linear. It's very linear. Thank you. Well, um, Ms. Whittemore did not make the decision easy. 
by any stretch of the imagination. She's very well qualified and very well spoken and well educated, and um, it makes it a. Uh, it's definitely a three-horse race in the uh, in this, and it's uh, it's not an easy choice. But regardless of who gets chosen, it's a win-win. No matter who we get in here, it looks like uh, it's someone that that uh, is going to help the board move forward. So that's all I have. Mr. Catino. Yeah, Darlene told me that, that Ms. Whittemore was very uh, qualified and, and uh, in looking at the at, at a CV and, and listening to her qualifications, they're, they're very good. And, and, um, as you know, that you know, Dr. Cohen's extremely qualified and did has done the job. And I'm, I'm just very pleased that, that uh, we've got uh, a couple of good candidates. Uh, and Mr. Anderson, he has to do his whole resume. So we've got some good candidates to choose from. Great. Uh, from my perspective, I mean, everyone's, I think, said uh, what I would say uh, as well. Um, I really appreciate people that come out and sit through these meetings and go through the process, the discussion, and put up with all that. Um, you know, one's presence uh, weighs very strongly with me. Um, but Mrs. Wright makes good points about Ms. Dr. Cohen's presence on the campaign trail for three months and all the things that he did uh, to, to get in front of the voters and try and encourage them to, to consider his his candidacy. And having been through more of those than I probably should have, um, I have a lot of respect for that process. Um, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's a tough one. It's a very difficult decision for me. I think we've got some great candidates. Uh, in my mind, I see it as two candidates, not three so much, um, uh, only because I'm not uh, as familiar with the other candidate. And, uh, you know, I think between the time put in during the campaign and the time this evening and the background and their ad advocacy on behalf of the lake and other things over the last 20 years, those are the two candidates in my mind. Um, so I'm kind of down to a two-person uh, process now instead of a three-person process. Do we have, do we have any inf information on uh, Dr. Cohen's attendance um, over the last couple of years on the board? Not, not officially, but so let me let me just let me just control this a little bit. Um, so the question is from Mr. Sistari what the attendance record of Dr. Cohen has been, correct? Mr. Kamal, do you have any information on that? Okay, thank you. Ed, can you come to the microphone and please comment? I believe he had perfect attendance when we met. Okay, thank you. Is that different than your Yes, very different. I did not have perfect attendance. I'm sorry? Are you asking me about my attendance? No, no. About <laughs> <laughs> you're already in the job. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> Thank you for that self-reflection, but that's why you're not getting the big bucks. <laughs> um, but is that your understanding of Dr. Cohen's attendance? Okay, so good uh, attendance. secret's out now. <laughs> Thank you. Good. A little levity in there? Yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, my next question was about Jen's attendance. But, uh, <laughs> that's answered too. <laughs> All right. Anybody else have any other thoughts, comments they want to put on the table? <laughs> okay. So uh, with that, do we want to try and go to round one here? Yes. Sure. Okay. Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. And what I thought we would do is just go from right around the table, just the way we did with our comments, and uh, each individual will cast their vote, and we will see how it plays out. So the Everybody okay with that? Voice vote. Voice. Voice. Voice vote. Lane will record it, um, and then we'll see where we are at the end of this first round. So we good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mrs. Wright. Dr. Philip Cohen. Mr. Sistar. Um, uh, pass. You can pass. No, can no, back. no. That that would be the the chicken's way out. Um, uh, Dr. Cohen. Okay. Lisa? Jen? Um, Dr. Cohen. Okay. Dr. Cohen. Okay. Dr. Cohen. Dr. Cohen. Okay. Lisa? This is Lazarus. Five votes for Dr. Cohen and two votes for Mr. Cohen. Okay, which makes a total of seven votes. Okay. Everybody good? Everybody clear on what they voted and what the outcome is? Any further discussion about the outcome? 
Okay, with that, we're in agreement that Dr. Cohen will serve, will be appointed by the Joint Committee to serve on the Board of Health through May of 2017. And uh, Lisa, thank you so much for coming tonight. We really appreciate you participating in the process. You made this very hard, thank you. Uh, which is a good thing, and uh, we hope that you'll continue to, to step forward and help the community. You've done a lot so far, and we could use your help other ways, and there's an election coming up in just a few months if you're interested. So uh, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Uh, with that, uh, we will adjourn this joint committee between the Board of Health. Well, uh, hang on one sec. Before we adjourn the joint committee, Mr. Kamalo, is there anything else that we need to do? Kind of vote basis. So but how do we uh, – I want to make sure we codify that vote. So we – we did a vote of five to two for Dr. Cohen, okay? And I think we should make it official and have him nominated for the position. So what I think we should do is we should just make, have a motion to appoint. Now, we, let's appoint him to the position. Like, we've agreed that that's the outcome. We, we had a motion to put three names in the nomination, and we held a vote, but now I think we should appoint. But if I may, Mr. Chairman, you did say the... We all agree that at the end of that vote, that person is the one that will be appointed. So I think you already made the motion. I think it's quicker for us just to do it rather than debate it. Okay. <laughs> um, do you understand what I'm saying? What, what do you suggest? Can't hurt. It can't hurt. It might be repetitive. Mr. Dean, do you have any comments on this piece of the puzzle? I think better safe than sorry. I'll just go for the vote. I have a motion to appoint Dr. Philip Cohen to the Board of Health to finish the term ending May 2017. Pursuant to the outcome of tonight's appointment process. Uh, it's not finishing the term. It's uh, till the next election. Till the next annual the next town, town election. election. Town election in May of 2017. Accept the amendment. So that's the motion. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Kamal, can you just repeat that motion, please? Pursuant to the process, appointment process tonight. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this motion? Good. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so it's unanimous and so carries. We've appointed him unanimously based on the process where we appoint him. We've got five to two. Okay, everybody good? And we'll adjourn the joint committee meeting and we'll continue with the Board of Selectmen meeting. Thank you very much for being Jennifer, here. Thank you. Have a good nice night. Nice job showing up. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, item number eight, joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Library Trustees. The Board of Selectmen and the Board of Library Trustees will hold a joint meeting to appoint a new member to the Library Board of Trustees for a term to expire at the May 2017 annual town election. Mr. Kamalo. We have one candidate. Okay, uh, and that candidate is here this evening. The candidate is not here this evening, but our colleagues from the Board of Library of Trustees are here, some of them anyway. Does somebody want to introduce us who, to who that candidate well, is? Wait, wait, are we in a joint meeting here? We are. So if you folks could come join us up here. And we need, how many people are on the Library Board of Trustees? Oh, there's five, but we're minus one. There's five? So you guys can go ahead and call yourself to order. Thank you. We have to do all the legal stuff here. Sorry. Um, so we have our colleagues from the board, Library Board of Trustees joining us, and we're going to have a joint committee meeting now to appoint a vacancy to that organization or that board. Uh, if it's okay with, the, with our colleagues in the Library Board of Trustees, uh, I would ask someone to I would entertain a motion for myself to be named as the chair of the joint committee between the board. So moved. Sorry, second. library trustees and the board, board of selectmen. So we have a motion and a second to name me as the chair. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so I will continue, continue to serve as the chair of this joint committee. So we have one candidate for one opening to go through May of 2017. 
Okay. And the candidate, Mr. Kamalo, is? Beth DeLiva. Beth DeLiva. Yeah. Okay, and the position was posted accordingly and with plenty of notice and all that, correct? Okay. All right, so we have one candidate, and um, so my first question would be, the candidate's not here, but our, 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 our colleagues on the Library Board of Trustees, are you guys familiar with the candidate at all? I am. They are? She is a regular library uh, patron <clears throat> in her family. Uh, she has, uh, I don't know what it's called, it's whatever is the welcome wagon. She does the um, hometown home, hospitality. Home hospitality in town. She has lived in town. Um, I've known her for at least 14 years, so she's been here at least that long. Um, I don't know prior to that. Um, she seems to be energetic. She's excited about contributing to the library. That's what I know about her. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions or comments specific to the candidate? I guess it's going to be an easy one. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, I, I don't know her, but I looked at her qualifications, and it seems that our library is a really vibrant, integral part of the community, and I think a big piece of effective life is community connectedness and vibration. And when I looked at the things that Ben has been is involved with between HPTA, the home, the um, hospitality, she puts together a newsletter, the hometown happenings. Um, she seems to be extremely engaged and connected, and um, have real good um, contact with the community. So I think that's a quality that would be probably very valuable in an effective library trustee. So I think we're fortunate that even though it's only one applicant, it would appear to me to be an applicant that has a number of qualities that would be valuable. Okay. Anybody have any other ideas or thoughts? I believe we're ready to probably proceed. So given the fact that we have one candidate, one position, we don't have to go through necessarily a process discussion. Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to appoint Ms. D'Alva to the open seat on the Library Board of Trustees uh, through May of 2017, uh, at which time the next town election will then... So moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Mr. Kamal, you good with where we are? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Excellent. We are done on this joint committee. Good Thank, you. Thank you for coming and helping out. <laughs> Thank you. Have a great night. So these folks will adjourn their meeting and we'll continue uh, our Board of Selectmen meeting. Okay, next up on tonight's agenda is a discussion uh, specific to a change of manager uh, petition. Well, it's a petition for a change of license at 110 Grill uh, here in Hopkinton at 1 Lumber Street uh, to change the manager from Ryan Dion to Michael Spots. Is Mr. Spots here by chance this evening? Okay. He does look familiar. Uh, and is Ryan Dion here this yes, evening? And that's Ryan there. Okay. Is anyone else here from 110 Grill? No. Okay. Um, all right. Mr. Kamalo, can you just Give us a quick overview of the process that we should be following here. Yes, um, through the chair, the board has the authority to approve the manager uh, for a licensed establishment. Uh, 110 Grill is a licensed establishment. And as part of the process, we circulate the application uh, to town council for review to ensure that the application meets all the legal requirements. Uh, town Council has reviewed this application and has no objections. Um, we also re circulated the application to the town's review team, uh, inc including the police department. The comments that we received from the town review team have been shared with the board at this point. Um, let the board ask any questions that the board may have. Okay. 
Does anybody have any questions or comments specific to the request? What's that? You guys good? You guys good? So the change is taking place because business matters. Mike is the full-time general manager on premise. Um, I'm the operator of the company. So prior to his arrival, I ha we had to file the license in someone's name. But now that we're open and established, uh, he's the full-time ranking guy on premise. So you are you report to Robert directly, and yes, you've got is. multiple restaurants, and yes. Mike is going to be the active one here. Yes. Okay. Makes sense. How's Robert doing? Fantastic. Good. Please tell him I said hello. Thanks. Um, okay. I think we're ready. Everybody good? So the chair will entertain a motion to approve the change in manager uh, petition from 110 Grill LS, Hopkinton LLC, from Ryan Dion to Mr. Michael Spots. So moved. Second. Mr. Kamal, is the motion in order? Yes, it is. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so we'll make sure that we get that done. All set. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thanks. Okay, uh, item number 10 on the agenda Main Street intersection improvements, uh, discussion and possible action specific to the Main Street corridor project. This is a topic um, on the agenda tonight. Uh, specific to uh, the work that's been going on in Hopkinton for probably, um, I'm going to guess about three years now of consistent, steady work to work with the Mass Department of Transportation and other entities, and certainly with our representation on Beacon Hill, Representative Dykema and Senator Spilka, to improve the uh, and streamline and um, beautify, if you will the main corridor, or Main Street corridor here in Hopkinton. Uh, this includes the intersection of Grove and Main Street. Uh, we need to, or the discussion has been, and certainly with MassDOT, that that intersection improvement would be part of a project that MassDOT has put in for funding for FY19. Uh, Mr. Kamal, do you want to give a little bit more background information on the topic? Yes, um, I think it's important to set the context. Uh, the context is that the town has submitted a 25% design to MassDOT for the Main Street Corridor Improvement Project. Um, the last discussions uh, at this meeting by the board uh, involved at least three aspects of the project. Uh, and that discussion was influenced by the preliminary comments the town had received from MassDOT, as well as the input that we had gathered from the public. The three issues that were integrated into the design included the following, undergrounding utilities, adding a bike lane, and also realigning the main Grove and Cedar Street intersection. Uh, at this point, we are also asking the board uh, for its guidance in terms of how we proceed with regard to the realignment of the intersection. Uh, the reason being, uh, MassDOT has indicated to us multiple times that the most effective means to improve vehicle safety and capacity at this location would be to realign one or both of the Cedar Street and Grove Street approaches so, so that they would align directly opposite each other as in a conventional four-way intersection. Our engineers have been gathering the data uh, that will allow uh, this uh, project to move beyond the 25% design, and Dave Del Torrio is here to answer any technical questions that the board may have. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Dave. Hello. How are you? Good. So do you concur with everything Mr. Kamala has said specific to where we've been and where we're going or where we're trying to go? <laughs> of course, yes. Huh? <laughs> Forget the fact that he's yes. the boss. Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Um, so very specifically, where are we with MassDOT right now? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we're coordinating with, with MassDOT 
very closely with the underground design uh, as well as the bike lane design. And VHB uh, is in process. VHB is the design engineer for the town um, to make a resubmission um, of the 25% design to include the changes to the bike lanes, um, the addition of the underground, and the realignment of the intersection. Those are the, the main you know, changes from the initial 25% design that was submitted in November of 14, I think. Um, so, you know, at this time I don't have a firm time frame on when that's going to be done, but, you know, all three of those have, have come a long way, and we had kind of have final um, parameters to, to, to make that resubmission. Right, so okay. it's just a matter of, you know, the push to the finish line. Well, how about timing with respect to the funding that we've been, uh, um, that's been suggested that we would get for the project? So the, the funding, help me out here if I'm off, yeah, you know, it's, by order of magnitude, we're looking at five, six million dollars, whatever that number is. Right now it's seven, it's, it's in the seven range. And that What's, seven million dollars is from the mass DOT. That's from the the MPO organization. That's the, the, the TIP funding. It's transportation improvement program. Mass dots a part of that, but it's more more of a federal program. So it's funding outside of Hopkinton, specific to this project, that won't impact taxpayers directly. But that funding is tied to this process of following the plan submission and everything that you just described. Yes. Okay. And it's directly. A, let's just say it's seven million dollars for conversation's sake. We're trying to figure all that out a little bit further down the path. Okay. Um, the challenge is, as I understand it, specific to the intersection itself. Focus on straightening as best we can that intersection, um, which now has got that jogging. If you're going from north, south to north, and you got other challenges, sort of turning left and right and so forth. Um, but the challenge is we don't have enough right of way to straighten that intersection today. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So a possible step in this process to move the project along in line with mass DOT expectations, and please jump in if anything I'm saying is out of, out of line or out of order or not accurate, but the process to move uh, the project along for the timing needed for funding, but also more directly or more, you know, more quickly is specific to the design itself, we need to have access to land to make this project work, correct? Yes. Okay. So now we get into the discussion, you know, which is a more difficult discussion uh, and one that we don't take lightly. We have an intersection that's got a funky jog in it. And it's an intersection that's been challenged for many, many years. With the growth of Hopkinton, it's becoming more and more challenging to navigate. Uh, we have a plan that can straighten that intersection, but that plan requires that we go through a process. Um, well, we could work with the landowner, but you know, the, 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 the typical municipal process for road improvements is to do a taking. Uh, and that taking uh, through eminent domain for public purposes would be to, um, would allow us to help straighten that intersection by pretty, will it be perfectly straight or will it be darn close to straight as you're driving through it? It'll be, it'll be close. It'll be close. It's not going to be a 90 degree intersection, but I mean, I'm, you, know, you rarely you start up the street far enough. And, and begin yeah. to straighten the lane, we're going to gradually... It, it, yeah, it, it's going to allow the, the signal and the timing appropriate for an intersection that's, you know, perfectly aligned. Yeah. I was going through the intersection the other day, and so I'm going from south to north. So this is my car. I'm in the right lane near the gas station on the right-hand side there, <coughs> uh, the Hopkinton gas station. And I'm going south to north, so I go into the intersection, and then I turn to get ready to turn left to then make my turn right to get through the intersection. As I turn left, the individual in the lane next to me, she decided she was going to go straight too. So she was coming right from my driver's side door at 25 miles an hour, 
uh, so I kind of sped away um, to avoid the T-bone, but I can only imagine that that happens very routinely in that intersection. And this is the problem that we have. And in order to fix that, we've got to get this lane here where this, she was about to drive into me. I have to be able to go straight through like this, and she's got to make that turn uh, and not be able to go straight herself. See, when both of us get in the intersection, it looks like we can both go through there. And that's where the problem is. Um, okay, so the process of taking that land uh, is, again, one we don't take lightly, but it's something we have to consider. My understanding from town council to move this process forward is that the Board of Selectmen needs to authorize uh, town council and the town manager to begin the process, uh, starting with an appraisal of the land required to straighten the intersection. Is that your understanding as well? Yeah, I, I briefly read up a summary from council, so it's my understanding. Okay. So um, the reason for having it on the agenda tonight is to begin that discussion and consider the possibility of uh, authorizing town manager and town council to uh, proceed with the, um, the land taking process specific to getting a appraisal going on the landing question. Anybody have any thoughts about that or? Questions, comments. I think uh, you know. I think that we need to um, approach this from you know a couple of angles, however many angles we can, to try to advance it. Uh, you know, I certainly think that we need to start this process. Uh, I know that um, uh, when the new owner came into town, there had been some discussion about working with the town on that intersection. Uh, it would be great if we could get all. Of the necessary parties at the table so that we could try to discuss this and, and uh, push something forward. Um, you know, it's also, you know, I understand that um, not everybody was the most welcoming in the community at that time either, um, but uh, hopefully everyone can move beyond that and realize that we're, we're all in this community together and let's move, move this forward. Uh, but in the end, whether or not that happens, I think we need to pursue... Um, you know, getting this appraisal done and take the next steps uh, from there. Uh, you know, trying to trying to acquire the land in, in whatever way is necessary. Okay. Mrs. Wright, any thoughts, comments? No, I agree. I mean, until we have something hard to work with, it, it's all conjecture. So we really need to have some, some numbers in front of us. And, um, you know, to Mr. Sestari's point about things gone by, um, I, I don't believe that in any official capacity the town um, put up any, really any obstacles um, other than, you know, hoping that new businesses will work cooperatively with the town, but um, what private citizens engage in is not a town's official position. Mr. Tedstone, thoughts? Awesome. Yeah, I, actually, I concur with the two of them. You know, it's. I, I was hoping that um, that we could get could have gotten into some discussions sooner than this before that, you know we got to this point. But we do need a, we, we do need to know what the what the land is worth. Um, no matter which way we go, if we go into if we do sit down and we're able to do discussions and and all that, we have to know what we're going to be spending. What's, what's it going to cost us to get the seven million dollars? We need to know that. Um, but uh, I'm really hoping that still we can sit down and and do something that works for both sides and not, and not have to uh, uh, go through a protracted. Uh, deal. Okay. So um, you know, I think uh, I'm pretty sure I know we haven't done a land taking in Hopkinton. Uh, from the Board of Selectmen's seat uh, in, the, in the eight years I've sat up here, which is 10 years in total, um, that I can recall. Um, so it's not something that happens routinely, and I'm just going to kind of just put a couple of thoughts out there for people to, to, to think, think through. When we say land taking, the community is not going to go take the land. Okay? The community pays fair market value for the land. So we don't go rob the land. We don't go put a fence up and say, you know, that's it. You can't cross this, this line anymore. The community would have to pay fair market value for the land. So uh, whoever owns the land 
is not going to you know, sort of get gypped out of you know, some value to that land. They may or may not want to give the land up, but the public you know, purpose involved in public safety and the general will of the community uh, plays heavy in a situation like this. We've got a dangerous intersection. We've got an intersection that's got more and more cars going through it every day. And we've got a state Department of Transportation saying you need to fix the intersection as part of this process. So we need to do some things. And uh, by doing so, though, we will pay fair market value for the land. And by beginning the appraisal process and the land taking process um, with town council, we'll come to understand what that fair market value is for the land. And then if this all proceeds, we will pay fair market value for the land. So it's not like big brothers come in and just, you know, yanking the land away, because that's what it sounds like. It sounds kind of nasty, but uh, there's a lot of reasons why we're considering this, and there's a lot of reasons why it needs to be done. And, and to your point, Mr. Chair, if I may, it, and this doesn't mean that this is the only way that we go about it. If, if, if the, um, the other parties want to come, come forth and, and actually want to do a deal with this, that, that we could still do that, can't we? Um, uh, the, the town is wide open to Absolutely. trying to figure this out uh, from a commercial perspective, if you will, uh, as opposed to a takings perspective. Um, but, you know, time is ticking, <clears throat> and uh, we, you know, we are charged, the Board of Selectmen and, and, and town meeting members and the entire community, we are all collectively charged with keeping our community moving forward. And specific to our role here tonight, you know, I'm all for having a conversation and trying to find a way to make this intersection work and make it work for the landowners in the area and businesses and everybody else. Uh, but if we can't get any traction there, we need to have another process in place and ready to, to, to go as well, and that's what this taking is all about. If I may, could we see if there's anybody from Crosspoint that might want to talk to this? Um, we can do that, yeah. I was because I wanted to check in with the planning board a little bit on it, too. Yeah, so. that's great. Yeah. Mrs. Wright. But um, yeah, I agree with Ms. Coutinho that, you know, if, if this can, we would hope that this would not have to be proceed, have to proceed adversarially. That would be ideal. But regardless of how the process moves forward, um, our fiduciary responsibility to the people of the town is to get, first and foremost, get a sense of the proper value so that any negotiations, under whatever circumstances, are done with full knowledge of what we're dealing with. Sure. And that's where getting the appraisal comes in. Regardless of which way you move, you need to know what you've got. Gotcha. Makes sense. Okay, any other comments, thoughts from the board? Mr. Kamala, any thoughts on this topic? Again, I think uh, it needs to be clarified that this the Main Street Corridor project uh, is scheduled for funding in the FY19 TIP process. Um, there is a process that is set in place for funding such public infrastructure projects. Uh, it's a two-step process where for the current fiscal year, there are projects that are underway, shovel ready, under construction and approved for funding with a specific appropriation. What this means is our, the town's Main Street Corridor project remains in the universe of the projects that can be funded in FY19. Just wanted to make sure uh, everybody understands that process. Okay, thank you. And that's thus the, cl the clock is ticking and we need to keep this process moving forward. Mrs. Lazarus, you are a professional in land management and uh, planning and uh, certainly fill that role for us as, long as, as well as many others in town. Uh, this is something that's been discussed for many years in Hopkinton. Do you have any thoughts that you want to share before some action tonight? It is something that's been discussed for many years, and many traffic studies have pointed out the deficiencies of the intersection and the need for it to be fixed. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Del Torre, any other thoughts? Not only one point of um, fiscal year 19 for the state starts in October of 2018, and that's when, so it's, even though it's fiscal year 19, it, it's really a, a process that starts in 2018, so the clock is really ticking. Thank you for that clarification. I'd like to go now, if I could, to the chair of the planning board, if he'd be so kind as to join us at the podium for a minute and just share his thoughts about the intersection and the possible land taking. 
Ken Weissman, 145 Ash Street, Chairman of the Planning Board. Uh, the Planning Board has studied this intersection and this corridor quite a bit, particularly among the legacy uh, area. I agree with the safety comments, but I also agree that the alignment greatly improves the efficiency of the intersection. Basically, when you get north and south signals going at the same time, you take the time right now, right now they go north goes one time, then south goes, and then east-west goes, which makes it a lot safer than it was two or three years ago uh, before Mr. McDowell paid for the light to be uh, changed. Well, when you can get north and south going at the same time and east and west going at the same time, you take the time of that one cycle and add it to our east and west, and more people will get through the light uh, every time in the cycle. And that's where the, the great efficiency improvement is, is, is to be found. And that's very important. Uh, I've spoke the last time at the MPO on behalf of the town in favor of this project. I did state that we were working hard to uh, realign this intersection. Uh, fortunately, we kept the funding from uh, that last time, so I was real happy with that. I was really kind of worried that I'd be speaking for the town and some other project would jump ahead of us and we wouldn't make FY19, but uh, we, we, we snuck in. But if we don't do these type of things, we will lose our place in line. There are lots of people standing up there, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, would love to have that seven or eight million dollars. So this is a project that needs to keep going. Uh, I fully agree with uh, getting the estimate and, and starting down that road. Uh, I have, when I was the water uh, sewer commissioner, I actually was part of a taking uh, on behalf of the town many years ago. And it's not necessarily a, a great process, but uh, it's sometimes when public need is, is there, and I think public need is, is there for this one. Thank you. Okay. Um, with that, I, you know, I think I'm sensing uh, some uh, uniform thoughts on the concept of proceeding uh, or initiating the land taking process. Mr. Katina. Should we, should we see if, uh, if uh, anybody from Cross Point is here? Excellent point. Is anyone here representing Cross Point this evening by chance? Thank you. I just want to make sure that, if, we that, if we could show that short circuit the process right now. Well, um, I, don't say, I don't see anybody. I don't think we could short circuit the process. No, no, I understand. But Even if they were here and said we'll, we'll do this, this, and this, I would still advocate that we begin a process that's a formal and legal process to maintain the public safety and enhance the efficiency of the intersection and everything else. Because, uh, you know, we can always walk down a couple of parallel paths here, and if this Absolutely. path falls apart or this path leads to nowhere, and we're well down a path over here, so I'd, I'd want to go ahead either way myself. May I make a motion? We need to be in a good negotiating position by knowing what, we, what we've got before we try to make any arrangements with anybody. We need to know what the land is worth. Do you have yeah, a exactly. We can't, yeah. we can't spend $5 million to get seven, you know? No. I mean, that's what we got to figure out. Yeah. Mr. Catino, do you want to make a motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to initiate a process for full alignment of the intersection of Grove, Cedar, and Main Streets by authorizing the town manager to uh, begin the process of getting appraisal, uh, appraisals. Is that... Uh, Can I offer an amendment to your motion? Sure. In the first sentence, you said to begin a process to... Whatever to you initiate said. a process Can you for put in the alignment. words land-taking process? Absolutely through eminent domain, land taking process through eminent domain, uh, and then whatever else was there. Mr. Kamal, can you just give us that motion back, please? Um, the motion is to initiate the land taking, um, the land taking process by eminent domain uh, to allow the full alignment of, I'm gonna add these words, full alignment of the main Cedar and Grove intersection uh, and by authorizing the town manager and town council to initiate the land appraisals. Is that your motion, Mr. Catino? Uh, uh, yes, town, I forgot town council, yes. That's okay, important. so Mr. Catino has a motion on the table. Is there a second? 
Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carries. Mr. Kamal, if you could get with town council and begin the process for land taking uh, and appraisal and report back to the board as soon as possible. Thank you. Chairman? Mrs. Wright. Um, before we leave the Main Street corridor, and while Dave is still here, I know our purpose was to talk about that intersection, but I had just another piece of information on the larger project that I wanted to share. Um, my understanding when Mr. Mr. Del Torrio spoke with the board about it a couple weeks back. There was some uh, in a draft plan to perhaps do some parking around the town common, and my interpretation was it might have involved taking a piece of that grass strip along the north side of the town common. And at that point, I pointed out that that's a historic district. Um, I don't know if I'm reading that plan correctly, that, that that grass apron that's on Marathon Way was being considered for addition, to be removed for additional parking. Um, you can go back and look at the plan more closely. That was my interpretation. Um, if that is the case, I, I just wanted to point out I have been in contact with Mass Historical Commission and um, the common and all of its area is part of a protected historic district under Mass Chapter 40C, and no piece of it can be removed. It cannot be reduced in area in any way. This is not the same as you know, removing a porch or changing windows in a protected property. This would, in effect, to take a piece of that grass for parking would, in effect, be reducing the district. Um, the only way that could be done would be through a whole process, same as you added to it or you established it with a study committee um, a, initiated by the Historical Commission, um, public hearing process, going to town meeting, being approved by Mass Historic. Um, it, it, it is not easy to take away a chunk of a district property. And I did speak with Mass Historic, who also explained to me that if it's a project that is involving state funding, which this would be, then the Mass Historical Commission would automatically become involved in any, um, any alteration or proposed reduction of any historic district property. So um, if that is indeed part of the early plan, um, I, I want to say this now because the longer something goes on, the harder it is to go back to the drawing board and change things. Um, but if that is part of the plan, the engineers need to look at a different option that would not involve attempting to take a piece of the common because that is that is protected land. Okay. I want to get that out there now. So just please take that under advisement and we'll come back at more appropriate time. Okay. Yeah, I just, no, fair the point. sooner you get it out, the easier it is to correct. Fair point. Okay. Do it now. Okay. Um, so with that, we'll move ahead to item number 11 on the agenda. Um, this is uh, 151 Hayden Row Preservation Restriction Agreement. The Board of Selectmen <coughs> consider signing the Preservation Restriction Agreement, agreement between the Town of Hopkinton and the owners, Philip and Donna Todaro. Mr. Kamalo. With your permission, Mr. Chair, um, Ms. Hazardous uh, is Absolutely. To this topic. The, uh, the Planning Board recently uh, approved a special permit uh, allowing the home at 151 Hayden Road to be placed on a smaller lot. Uh, pursuant to the um, signing of a historic preservation agreement between the Historical Commission and the owners. They have come to an agreement, and the agreement that they have reached is before you and has been reviewed by Town Council, who has indicated it's acceptable to sign. Okay. Mr. Resnick. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, board members, um, Claire, Brendan, this is the first time I've been before the board since your election. Congratulations. Um, I We've represent missed you. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we've missed you. <laughs> I'm back. Um, the, first of all, does everybody have their little packets of information that go along with this? Okay, good. Um, the bylaw that under which the special permit was granted was adopted in 2011. It is a very well written bylaw, 
in 2015, not this past town meeting, but the year before that, the ZAC, the planning board recommended, and town meeting passed an important amendment, which was to condition such a special permit on a historic preservation restriction. And that's what's happened in this case. And we worked with the planning board, of course, and with the historical commission. They had to do a couple of things. One was to um, determine that, in fact, it was a historic structure. And the second was they, they were invaluable in helping us craft a restriction that worked to preserve the structure without being so burdensome to the owners of the town that it was, and, and Mike Rowan's really responsible for giving us that charge, and we helped him. Uh, I think we enacted what he, or we wrote what he asked for. Town Council did make a couple of technical changes. They had not changed anything of the substance of what we wrote. Um, and we are asking the board tonight, whoops. <laughs> The thing doesn't go all the way across. <laughs> um, we are asking the Board of Selectmen tonight to endorse, sign, approve the res restriction itself. Um, although the, uh, in the document the Historical Commission will be the enforcement agency and everything having to do with the restriction will be accomplished by the Historical Commission, only the Board of Selectmen can enter into a contract um, on behalf of the town. So that's why we're asking you to sign it. I have to say that the appeal period is still pending and is not up until the 15th, Monday. So I guess what I'd, what I'd ask is that the board consider signing it tonight, giving the signature page to Elaine and having her hold it until the appeal period expires. I see Connor here. Um, I'm sure he'll make sure that uh, that all happens might even want to leave that page with him Okay, thank you. Mrs. Lazarus is Does the town manager's office have a recommendation to the board of selectmen for this issue? Uh, recommend that you sign the historic preservation agreement and are you okay with holding that signature page for a couple of days? Yes Okay. All right Okay um, Any thoughts questions from the board? Exactly why we we amended uh, last year, two years ago, uh, last year, was to make sure that uh, these restrictions can get in place and, and, and they are not uh, onerous on the uh, on the property owners. Good. I'm good. Good. Okay. Good. Yep. Okay. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the uh, signing of the preservation restriction agreement. Um, for 151 Hayden Row Street in Hopkinton. So moved. Second. Mr. Kamal, you good with that motion? Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous and so carried. So Thank, Thank you all very done. much. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Item number 12. Item number 12 um, is always an interesting one. Um, as we get into sort of the human resources and performance management process for our professional employees in town hall that report to the Board of Selectmen. Typically, in most of our private sector worlds where we work, uh, you know, for a number of us anyway, HR work is done behind closed doors with an HR manager and the reporting supervisor and maybe a couple other people all in the space and you talk about the goods and good things that have been done last year the bad things that have been done last year and you have a private conversation about how you can all improve and move your organization your role in the company or whatever it is forward in the public sector we do that in public and um, it makes it interesting it makes it a little awkward at times I mean it's always been pretty good stuff uh, in, in Hopkinton fortunately but on occasion we've had some challenges that we have to deal with um, specific to the individuals that report to the Board of Selectmen it's the town manager the chief of police and the fire chief and that's it right yeah so we have three evaluations that we need to do 
and those evaluations uh, will be done in public following a process that town council has guided us on to follow open meeting laws make sure everything is transparent um, and at the same time is an organized approach because we could get five of us doing five different reviews from five different angles with five different forms and I mean it could just turn into a big mess so that's sort of the background and backdrop to the to the discussion uh, I'd ask Mr. Kamala to also weigh in on it and give his views uh, of the topic thank you mr. chair um, a couple of points that I want to share um, in terms of defining the the context of, for the evaluations um, over the years the town has um, implemented a pay uh, for performance system uh, this is a system that we apply um, for all non-union employees and I should also say with the cooperation of some of the town unions we have also extended that principle uh, to our union members and so the, the pay for performance system is a, is a system that we want to implement townwide uh, and what that enti entails is specifically asking employees working with their supervisors to begin by uh, setting stretch goals. Um, these are goals that uh, we all agree upon uh, through that discussion. And in the context of the town manager, the police chief and the fire chief, there is in fact reference to the goal setting process and the performance evaluation process in all of our contracts. So the point I'm making is this is a system that we are implementing agency-wide, uh, but more specifically for the three positions that report to the town manager, uh, the goal setting process as well as the performance evaluation process are both set in the, con in the contract. Uh, in terms of process, what the board does, um, I always tell people that uh, I like my job because uh, it's very challenging. Things change very quickly. Along those lines, most recently, the Superior Court, in a case that involved the Wayland Board of Selectmen, uh, invalidated the procedure that is commonly used uh, by towns or boards of selectmen uh, to evaluate town employees such as the town manager, police chief, and the fire chief who report directly to the board. Under that procedure, which in fact uh, uh, I think the three of you are familiar with, or you, Brendan and, and, and Clay, you may have seen on, on television, uh, each member of the board would compile an individual evaluation, which would then be submitted to the chair, who would develop a proposed evaluation synthesizing the individual comments of the members. The chair drafts would then be discussed in an open meeting of the board, modified as deemed necessary by the board, and then voted on. That's the process that the board has followed before. Unfortunately, the Superior Court has nullified that process. In consultations with our town council, uh, he did offer that the town of Wayland granted uh, has indicated uh, that it would like to appeal this decision. His advice is that, well, perhaps we should follow what the Superior Court has said we should do now. Uh, to that end, he did check with the Attorney General's office, and here is what is proposed. We looked at different options, and I think uh, following our discussions of the different options, we settled on the following option, uh, that the selectmen rely on a staff member to collate the evaluations. Not to write, but to collate or compile the evaluations. The selectmen can each send their performance evaluations to a staff member who would merely compile them for distribution. The evaluation should be sent as a PDF or 
as a paper copy to the staff member directly. Editable documents are discouraged, and that's why the emphasis is, is on PDF. Uh, the compiled evaluation would then be distributed to the board members in the meeting packet, provided that the members do not discuss the evaluations until the open meeting. So there's a choice. The evaluations compiled can be included in the meeting packet or alternatively could be brought directly to the open meeting. Uh, in this case, uh, Town Council believes that the person who merely collects collects and distributes the individual evaluations should not be deemed to have participated in the process. Therefore, the staff member designated to perform this function for the, especially for the town manager's evaluation can be somebody who is appointed by the town manager so long as they sign a conflict of interest form. The town council has advised that in the case of the fire and the police chiefs, the town manager can play the role of the staff person receiving the evaluations from the board members. However, we did look around to see who could collect this information on behalf of the board. And the only person that comes to mind, or the only department that comes to mind, is our HR department. However, because the HR director is appointed by the town manager, that's why, in the abundance of caution, the recommendation is that they sign a conflict of interest form. So, PCA being, in summary form, previous process where the chairman, the chair of the board, collects the information, compiles the draft, is no longer valid. Uh, understanding that the town of Wayland may appeal the decision of the Superior Court. However, to play it safe uh, I, and also to really foster the openness and transparency of the process, uh, we are recommending that uh, the board uses a, a staff member. I should mention the decision of the, uh, of the Superior Court clearly said this cannot be done by a member of the board, i.e. the collection, summarization of the evaluations cannot be done by a member of the board. Okay. So we have a police chief that we do need to do a full review uh, with. Uh, I'm excited about the review because I think it will be an excellent review. But we have to do a police chief review. And we have a town manager to review. Um, we have a new fire chief that really just went into the role. So I'm struggling to see why we would review the fire chief for a job he didn't have last year. And we're talking about FY16 here. So we're talking about July 1, 15 to June 30, 16. Um, so, but we do want to make sure we get in writing the fire chief's goals for FY17. So what I would suggest is that we get the HR director to circulate a standard form and the forms for doing reviews are pretty widely known in the world, whatever they are out there. And I think we have some in town hall, actually. We do. We get those forms to us in a blank manner. Those forms would then be completed by each member for the town manager for FY16, for the police chief for FY16, and also a form that we'll all complete for the goals that we think the fire chief should consider for FY17. Does that make sense? I think we have to have a standard form that we use to submit our information and thoughts to. We, we do have one that we've been using for the last yeah. several years. Yeah, so that's, let's get that out to everybody. Our new members we need to see that. Uh, but and, we do that for those three positions. And the but, oh. police chief and fire chief information goes to the town manager. But with those, with those forms, part of the distribution package should also be the goals from last year. And Typically, what we've done in the past is had Mr. Kamalo and the chiefs uh, submit their their personal assessment against their goals. And yeah, and we have some of those already. Well. Yeah, that's come in. Some of those have come in. Okay. Um, but just to clarify how the, the information will flow, and we'll come back to some questions here. 
are, we're all, are we all in agreement that the, the police chief and the fire chief information will flow through the town manager himself? And the information specific to the town manager will go to Maria and HR. Well, that was my question. Because if I, if I may, and I don't want to make this a, a John O process. You said there was st that there were several avenues that one could take, and this is the one that you picked. What were some of the other, or if I can, was, was there another one that was that that there was another process that that you were stuck between? Like, Maybe we'll go with this one, and maybe we'll go with another one. So another one that, that would have been approved by the, by the courts or the Attorney General. That uh... Yes. The, the other option we considered um, would have entailed staff members actually drafting the evaluation based on one-to-one -one discussions with the individual board members. The trick there was how we would control that discussion in a manner that would preclude the staff member discussing the opinions of another board member with another board member. These are, these are processes that are clearly put together by government employees. This is ridiculous. It really is. You know, talk well, it's about open meeting law. It's all the other yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, I understand all that, and and you know, I, you know, not that this is the forum, but I I disagree with um, uh, their their assessment of Wayland's process, our process. I think that the process was very open. It gave everybody an opportunity to submit their own personal assessment. Um, it, those those papers were not distributed among the entire board. There was no deliberation. There was only deliberation about, uh, you know, a final compilation of these, and it was brought out. It was put in public. You know, it's just, it's ridiculous. Uh, they, they only try to make things more difficult for people who are volunteering to try to serve the localities, and it's, it's silly. It really is. Okay. Any other thoughts? This is right. I, I do just want to point out that this is going through the end of FY16, which is June 30th, and I know the selectmen, Brenda and I, have, will have been on that board for all the six weeks. So, um, you know, I, I feel a little unqualified to make judgments on somebody's performance for ten and a half months when I was not on this board. But um, I certainly would look to see an outline of goals that we're looking towards. And um, it, it, it's, a, it's a little hard for new board members to be making that kind of a call. So can we get the uh, goals for FY16 uh, out to the individual members from Maria uh, for yourself as well as the two chiefs? And uh, can we also get out to the individual members the self-assessments put together by yourself and Chief Lee to date. And Chief Slamman has not done that because he wasn't in the job, uh, right? Um, but also um, get the form out, a blank form for the reviews and a blank form uh, that would show the goal setting for Chief Slamman. And reiterate again, which goes where police and fire go to. The, all these stuff, the, all that information comes to us, and then when you get the information, you fill it out and you send it back. You send it to Mr. Kamalo for the two chiefs. Right, and human resources and for Mr. Kamalo. You send it to Kamala. human resources, Maria, for Mr. Kamalo. Oh, human resources being Maria. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I had. Okay. Is that the way to proceed, Mr. Kamalo? Yes, if, if the board is so inclined. I believe that is the best way to proceed given public process. Mrs. Wright. One more question. Are our names attached to these? Like when, my understanding is that no one is going to synthesize all the information. The information is going to be redistributed to the board members in raw form, just as it was submitted. That is correct. correct. Are, are our names to be on that so we know whose input we're reading, or is that to be... Five anonymous. No, it needs to be on. No, Your name needs to be known. Okay. Yeah, anything no, that goes. Just, yeah. just asking. I mean, I would. I no, would no, think yeah, so. Yeah. Fair question. But they can always take it off. I guess. 
Okay, everybody good? Mr. Kamal, you good with the process? Yes, acknowledging that uh, I, I do share Ms. Sister's concerns. I, I, when I, when when I, I reference this, government uh, employees, I don't mean you. <laughs> 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 he means Elaine. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's move along, please. Uh, board liaison assignments, Mr. Sestari. Uh, nothing or, to report. Or liaison reports. Uh, nothing to report. Mrs. Wright. Well, I just did my historic district song and dance, so and historical commission. I'm thrilled with the uh, preservation restriction and nothing else right now. Mr. Tedstone. So I met with the open space and the... the um, elementary school um, commission there and uh, everything's going good excellent thank you mr. Catino I had a really busy month we had the opening of uh, the Verizon uh, the 110 grill opening and just yesterday cycle city yeah, this is great and we're really showing that Hopkinton is indeed open for business those were those are really good ones uh, two weeks ago we had a uh, the Trails Committee um, had a trail cleanup to get ready for the uh, Arts on the Trail. It wasn't as well attended as we had hoped. There were three of us, but, uh, <laughs> and uh, I was the uh, I was the youngest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but we uh, we managed to get a lot done. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a it was a nice uh, it was a nice Saturday. Um, who's then, who's the I, oldest? Uh, oh gosh, I don't want to go there. <laughs> um, then we had uh, this last week. We we had the new ladder. Well, was, I showed the pictures earlier. That was uh, that was a heck of a lot of fun. And, and the chief uh, is really doing a great job uh, training the um, training everybody on how to use it effectively and and um, getting the most out of the uh, the money he spent. Great job, great job. Okay. Anything else? Uh, the Metro West Regional Transit Authority voted on uh, last Friday, Friday afternoon meeting in the summer, can you believe that one, uh, to uh, support and manage the Framingham MBTA station going forward. It's a collaborative effort between the WRTA and the MBTA to uh, sort of take over that station, the parking area, uh, expand the parking area, manage it on a daily basis, maintain it. Uh, in a much different fashion than it's been maintained over the years. Uh, it's a big uh, effort. It's not money coming out of our pocket so much as it's federal grant money and state money coming together with the MBTA to make it happen, but we're going to be the managing authority uh, of that facility going forward. Uh, it's been in disrepair and sort of uh, ignored for a long time for whatever reason, so uh, we're excited about that. It'll build the brand of the MWRTA. It's a big jump-off point uh, for Metro West. Uh, and the buses, so uh, it was a unanimous vote by the NWRTA to do that. That's that <coughs> T station, the center of Framingham? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other than that, any other liaisons? Everyone's good? Okay, Mr. Kamala, your report, please. Yes, I'm requesting the board affirm the town, following town manager appointments. Animal Control Officer William Proctor, July 1, 2016 through July 1, 2017. Inspector of Animals, Cynthia Proctor, July 1, 2016 through July 1, 2017. Parking Clerk, Jerry Holland, July 1, 2016 through July 1, 2017. I also want to uh, share with the board that um, we met as the Metro West uh, Board uh, for Veteran Services and uh, began contract negotiations with the uh, current um, Veterans Agent John Givner, who are hopeful that we'll get an agreement on a contract at our next in time for our next meeting. Okay. Anything else? No. Nope. All right. So uh, Mr. Kamal has asked that we affirm three appointments, two animal animal control officer and an animal, what was this? King Clark, Jerry Holland. Right. But you had two, there was yeah. Yeah. Inspection. animal control officer, inspector of animals. Is there a conflict there between the those two positions and the, then the two individuals that you've named that I believe are related yeah there's there's no apparent conflict okay fine all right so the chair will entertain a motion to affirm those three appointments please so moved second any discussion 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. So it carries. Anything else, Mr. Kamal? No, I'm, I'm all set. Future board agenda items. Mr. Tedstone. I got nothing. Still looking uh, for um, looking at parking for downtown. Looking at uh, uh, discussing and see what uh, some options might be. So parking, Mr. Kamalo, uh, it's on our list. I know it will be part of this whole 25% move into higher plans in terms of the engineering for the corridor, but noted. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Wright. Not right now. Okay. Anything else anyone has to put on the table? The chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move a second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, all. Thank you. Thank you.